honor, dignity, service to others, and respect. During unprecedented times, first responders across the nation are working hard to keep us and our families safe. This week, we take time to pay homage to these selfless individuals across the nation, the ones putting their lives on the line every day for our freedom. First responders, the GNCC Racing Nation owes you it all. From the bottom of our heart, thank you. Welcome to round number 10 of the 2022 Grand National Cross Country Racing Series presented by Specialized in AMA National Championship. We're here in Beckley, West Virginia at the Summit Bechtel Reserve for this, the Rocky Mountain ATV MC Mountaineer GNCC. And I tell you what, after what felt like a forever summer break, finally back at it ready to roll the stage is set and again a season where the storyline has been injuries 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 continues to plague us here today as is you by now you have the news no ben kelly sounds like no ben kelly for the rest of the season chose to sit it out wants to uh, have those surgeries get rested up and come back next season swinging so it opens up the window of opportunity our points leader coming off his first career overall win Jordan Ashburn, the Magna One Motorsports Husqvarna ride, uh, picking up that elusive first win at Snowshoe. You know he's going to be riding with confidence. Uh, where will the rest of the pack stack up? Of course, your third place, uh, as far as points are concerned, Trevor Bollinger uh, also out. So, hey, Craig DeLong, opportunity. Grant Baylor, opportunity. How about this Linden Snodgrass? Can Snodgrass from row two maybe pull off an overall who knows? It's going to be an interesting day, to say the least. Ricky Russell uh, going to be out there. Our hearts go out to our good buddy DK, the mechanic for Ricky Russell. Uh, suffered uh, a heart attack uh, here uh, Friday night. Not out here racing with us, so you know uh, Ricky Russell going to have to uh, really put in the work. Is he going to come out and do it for DK? You know that emotional uh, drive before a race can really carry you. So, DK, if you're watching, our hearts go out to you. But I think expect some big things out of Ricky Russell. Stu Baylor making his return. Where will Stu stack up in the XC1? And then, of course, we look at the XC2. We mentioned Lyndon Snodgrass, uh, an incredible season for him. Your points leader with 198 on the season. Ryder Lafferty's had a good year. Sits second in points. And Mike Wachowski back there in the third spot. Rui Barbosa fourth. And Cody Barnes rounding out the top five of that XC2 class. Always puts on a good show. Will we see an XC2 rider in the top three overall today? Will we see an XC2 rider for the win? And, of course, we can't forget about the FMF XC3. Zach Hayes getting the job done this year. The 722 KTM ride uh, sitting with a 226 points on the season. Uh, puts him in first place. Brody Johnson in the two spot. And Jake Froman round out that top three. So, hey, the stage is set. It's silly season here at GNCC. How are things going to stack up? Can't wait to get to the racing. Hey, but first, we're going to throw it down to Jared Bolton with the Yamaha track description. Well, thanks, guys. We're finally back from summer break. And what better place to come back from summer break than right here at the Summit Vector Reserve. Beautiful Boy Scout camp. You know, every week I say there's a little bit of something for everyone. That's not entirely true here at the Mountaineer. This place is definitely a lot more technical. It's rocky, a little more like snowshoe. However, unlike snowshoe, the rocks here, they're loose. They move around a lot. This is a very rocky course. Lots of twists, lots of turns up, down, through little valleys. And guess what? No matter what you do, there's a little bit of mud out there as well. Overall, this is a technical, rough, tough course. Not for wimps. Great track. Hope you guys enjoy it as much as I have.
Well, thanks a lot, Jared Bolton. Looks like we've got an incredible racetrack here today, as we expect, as we always have here at the GNCC. Summer break's over. It's good to be back. We're going to take a quick word from our sponsors, and when we come back, we'll be down on the starting line for our 10-second calls. We all have our reasons to accomplish, to work hard. We share a common goal, to be the best. Keep fighting, put in the work, never take the easy way. Your drive and determination fuels our passion. This Racer TV broadcast is brought to you by Specialized. Specialized Turbo E-Bikes. It's you, only faster. And by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. afternoon GNCC Racing Nation and a big welcome to everybody watching on racertv.com uh, working on a little bit of a delay here this afternoon uh, still waiting to get some riders off of the track from the AM race but uh, we'll be ready to get things going here shortly before you know it summer break is going to be over for the uh, afternoon bike uh, the pro race uh, as well as a race for our A riders. Uh, hey, want to welcome you guys back out again. The Rocky Mountain ATV MC uh, Mountaineer GNCC here in the mecca of off road racing, West by God, Virginia. Uh, this, hey, listen, coming from a Hoosier, Indiana guy, this feels like home. No doubt about it when we talk about off road racing. Can't do it without all you guys out there uh, who make it happen. The riders, the moms, the dads. Nana, Papa, the aunts, the uncles, everybody. But of course, we can't do it without a bunch of amazing sponsors as well. And talking about sponsors like uh, our returning presenting sponsor, Specialized, back with us here for 2022. Actually crowned an EMTB champion uh, last night. Big congratulations to Charlie Mullins. Uh, he said, hey, this is it. I'm done. I'm, I'm officially retiring after this. Four EMTB championships. You got the bike as well. Um, 
He said he's going to race again, but not a full season. So congratulations to Charlie Mullins and a shout out to Specialized for that. Uh, I got to thank Monster Energy as well as Yamaha Racing, Rocky Mountain, ATVMC.com, the title sponsor of this Mountaineer GNCC. And of course, a big shout out and thank you to Amsoil as well. Amsoil, the first in synthetics, Parts Unlimited, and Moose Racing as well as FMF, VP Racing Fuels, GBC Power Sport Tires. Dunlop motorcycle tires as well as Hoosier racing tires, Michelin tires, uh, Method race wheels. And hey, guys, don't forget all those uh, big tire sponsors here at GNCC. They've got great contingency programs. Make sure uh, you guys are informed on that and making the most for your race program. Uh, Wiseco Performance Products as well as All Balls Racing, HPD Graphics, Arma, as well as our associate sponsors, uh, Factory Connection, Cometa Gasket Store, Alpine Stars, as well as Moose Utility, Twin Air, 100%. Uh, Stacey Cop Coppersmith Racing, DeRisi Racing, as well as Ray Cluse, a Browns RV Superstore, uh, Mid-State Chevy, Westfield Power Sports, and of course, Moto Tees. Don't forget to pick up your official Vent T-shirt if you're here. If not, check out the website. I believe you can order them online as well. And a uh, shout out and thank you to our good friends over there at Racer X Team Faith. Want to give a special shout out to Chuck Lamaster. Uh, if you're tuning in on Racer TV, you're probably thinking, that doesn't quite look like Rodney. You're correct, Mikey Wayne's up here. Rodney had a, a family emergency this weekend, could not be with us. So Rodney, if you're at home watching, we send our love and our condolences to, uh, to your family. Uh, and in his absence, Chuck Lamaster came out, uh, really kind of filled my shoes. He called the amateur racing with us in the mornings, uh, called the pro race with us on ATV side, and had his normal duties there with Team Faith uh, yesterday evening as well. So thank you to Chuck Lamaster, a hard working man, no doubt. And he raced this morning, so how about that? Also want to give a shout out to Vet Ticks as well as the Kurt Caselli Foundation and On Track School. And of course we can't do it without the AMA, the American Motorcyclist Association. And now the riders meeting, the start. GNCC is a dead engine start. When the blue flag is given, all engines must shut down. This blue flag will also signal 30 seconds before the start of the race. Watch the official starter, Rick Towery near turn one and when he puts his left arm straight out, that will signal 10 seconds before the start. At this point, all mechanics must step behind the riders. The green flag signaling the start of the race will be thrown anywhere between 8 to 10 seconds following the 10-second call. Do not start your engine before the green flag is thrown. Pro riders who start their machine after the official starter fully extends his arm to signal the 10-second mark will be held at the finish line at the end of the first lap from 15 to 30 seconds. This procedure will be followed for each row. Rows will start approximately one minute apart unless the official indicates otherwise. AMA rules prohibit the use of helmet cameras. If you have one, now is the time to remove it. Scoring. Transponder scoring is the official scoring system for GNCC racing. When you arrive at the scoring zone at the finish line, you must stop. The official may wipe your helmet first if it is muddy, but wait until he releases you to go. The finish of the race is at the finish line, not at the scoring zone. Do not race into the scoring zone. The area between the finish line and the scoring zone is a no passing zone. Checkpoints. There will be two to possibly three checkpoints in addition to the main scoring zone. These points will be marked with double stripe placards. You do not have to stop at the checkpoints, but you cannot pass or race through them. These are no passing zones as well, and you must proceed with caution. Pitting. XC1, XC2, and XC3 riders are required to fuel in their designated pro pit areas, with the exception that if a rider runs completely out of fuel on the race course, he may obtain fuel outside from any source sufficient only enough to allow him to continue along the race course to his pit area where he must stop and refuel whether he needs it or not. All other riders may pit anywhere along the track with the exception of the scoring zone. There is no pitting or signaling within the scoring zone. Crew members are prohibited from using pit vehicles during the race. The track. Once your row has started, you will follow the arrows into the woods. The course is marked with red or black arrows, ribbons, and tape. The marked course is within 25 feet of the race arrows. The exception to the 25-foot rule is fencing, signs, staked areas, hay bales, motocross tracks, or grass track sections. You must stay within the confines of these markings. You may not cut to the inside of a white pole corner marker. In addition, several areas are marked with red and white tape and red and white striped placards, 
posted on both sides of the course. You must stay between these placards. Exit signal danger. Please use caution in these areas as they are difficult sections of the track. A W means wrong way. You've either gotten off course or you're heading off course. Turn around and return to the track where you left it. You must stay on the marked course. If you encounter a bottleneck, you may go more than 25 feet off the course in order to get around the bottleneck only. However, you must re-enter the course as soon as possible, and upon approaching this section the next lap, you must take the original course if the track is clear. If you leave the course for any reason, you must re-enter where you left. If you cut, we do not stop you. We simply take your number down and penalize you. It is no excuse that you're following another rider. You are responsible to follow the course. If you encounter a lap rider, give him notice you are behind him. Have patience and give the rider time to safely get out of the way. If you are a lap rider, be courteous and move over when it's safe to do so. If you hear a rider come up fast behind you and yell he's not in your class, be courteous and let him by. This especially applies for pro riders coming up on lapped riders. Lapped amateur riders must quickly allow pro riders to pass when safe to do so. You may even point to the side it is safe to pass you on. The course is marked with mile markers to let you know where you are. If you encounter an injured rider, you do not have to sacrifice your race and tell the first official you see where the injured rider can be found. We will get help on the way. Once the checker flag is thrown, our sweep crew will check the course to make sure all riders and machines are retrieved. Pit crews, if you are missing a rider, please notify the finish line scorer. Riders, if you break down, stay with your machine unless you are injured. Our crew cannot tow out a machine without a rider to steer it. Your race will be three hours long. Well, well, thank you for that. The voice of Rodney Tomlin uh, recorded. And now for the live voice, our trail boss, Mr. Ryan Eccles. Thank you, Mikey. Yeah, guys, as bad as it's been out there, it's actually getting better. Uh, it's going to be a little rough. And if you like ruts, you're going to be good to go. Uh, so you guys going to take off from the start here. You'll have a little bit of track side over to the one mile mark. You just dive in the woods there for a second before you jump back out. You guys will head down a little hill. I haven't been down it uh, since this morning. I'd imagine it's probably still a little slick, so just be careful that first lap when you guys are trying to make passes. I'll take you down through the Monster Mile that first time through. Uh, you guys all walk, and I know you have. You, the inside line is your fast line. If it gets uh, bottled up, just go down to the outside. You can get around there. That'll bring you back up in a little bit more track side before you guys head in the woods. You guys will uh, work your way down just like the morning did to the two-mile mark. And at the two, you guys were going to break off from the morning went. So you guys were getting this whole track. We didn't take anything out. We put everything back in. So you guys are going to make your way to the three. And when you guys get out that way, it's super slick. About the two and a half when you go across that pipe. I'm going to say some of you are probably not going to make that hill. So if you can't make that hill or if it bottlenecks up, if you look to your left, I made a way around. It's a whole lot longer, but you can get around. It's better than sitting there. So you'll get up over that hill. You'll go down through there. Uh, over past the three mile mark. That'll bring you by check one, cross over the road. Uh, you're about the 3.4, you guys will go down to that rock bottom trail. Uh, the afternoon ran into yesterday. The second lap, you guys are going in the first lap. You guys will make it through there, a little uh, uphill at the end of it. Uh, it's not too bad, guys, after that, all the way to four, uh, out past the five. You'll go through a little rock garden after the five, cross the power line there. It uh, gets a little bit more rutted, but it's actually pretty good. I just went through there and it's actually drives over past the six. Uh, gets a little bit more uh, rough there towards the seven mile mark. You guys will work your way up through there where the afternoon quads went. The morning bikes ran it. No one really had any issues with it. Over to the eight mile mark. And then it's where you guys will finally get a smile. Like after you guys ride all that stuff, you're like, man, at the eight mile mark, you get off that. Get onto that fresh bike only stuff. Just really enjoy it. Make sure you guys stay with the arrows over there, guys. We cleaned the uh, that four foot path off and I can't tell you what's on the left or right of it. There could be some trees and stuff. So just stay where you guys uh, need to see there. That'll bring you back over. You guys work your way back down over the hill to the nine mile mark. You'll have that pass straight away. Uh, I'll bring you out through there. Just be careful there, guys. After that, you guys come up across the road. You have the FMF PowerPoint. If you don't want to do the PowerPoint, guys, you can go to the right. You go up there and you'll make a left and you just bypass that hill. It'll bring you back in uh, up close to the monster mile. Where you come down to the 10-mile mark, you work your way around the backside here, a little bit of fast stuff up to the finish line. Uh, it's in through pro pits, back around the back here and tying you back in. So you guys are about 12.1 miles, maybe just a smidge longer than that. Should be a lot of fun. Just pay attention there as the first lap, guys, and uh, it's going to be slick in a couple spots. Safety first. 
GNCC racing, like all motorsports, can be dangerous. Racers, now that you have had an opportunity to inspect the course, have heard the race procedures and a description of the course, if you feel that either you or your machine is not prepared, then now is the time for you to withdraw for a complete refund of your entry fee, no questions asked. It is your responsibility to operate your machine in a safe manner, maintaining control at all times. Extreme caution is required when approaching areas with high concentrations of fans. Do not take unnecessary risks that endanger the safety of fans. You will be penalized for reckless racing. Race fans, crew members, and family members, due to the nature of GNCC racing, there is no fence barrier around the race course. It is your responsibility to keep yourself and your children a safe distance from the race course. Never turn your back on oncoming racers. Use extreme caution when crossing the race course. And remember, stay off the track. For the safety of everyone, unauthorized drones are prohibited and may be confiscated. And finally, unauthorized pit vehicles are prohibited and may be confiscated. Absolutely no pit vehicles permitted in the woods or on the racetrack. All right, well, we, uh, we're going to do our pro row intros. I don't have Jeremy Holbert over there calling them out. So stand by, folks. I believe we'll have our pro rider intros coming up here next. I want to get some confirmation on that. And uh, obviously, with this being 9-11, our salute to our first responders, we're going to have some uh, uh, special presentations coming up after our pro rider introductions. So let me see what we're going to do here. We may audible. While we wait on the official man to get here, we got about 30 seconds, give or take. So we'll give him a minute. I'm gonna walk over there because we got some returning faces. We're not gonna say new faces, some returning faces. Maybe I can get a mic in one of their faces and we'll powwow until we're ready to roll here. Just about ready to get going. I was gonna walk up to the first guy I see, which is Thad Duvall. Thad, how you doing, my guy? Uh, living the dream, bud. <laughs> living the dream. Hey, first of all, it's good to have you back here at GNCC. Uh, where's your head at as you come into this weekend? Yeah, I feel, I'm real ready to go. Um, the hip's been pretty solid, so just uh, get back to racing and uh, have some fun with these guys and uh, push some people around. And um, Yeah, excited just to race. I, I, I miss the racing aspect. I still come to the GNCCs, but just uh, sitting here having those butterflies and uh, being nervous, I, I miss that. So. Yeah, I'm excited to, to race and have some fun and, um, yeah, just uh, go out and uh, <laughs> try to win, I guess. So we'll see. Hey, go have fun, Thad Duvall. All right, Jeremy Holbert did make his way down here, so we are ready to get these pro rider introductions going. How's Thad Duvall going to stack up? All right, let's get it going. Let's meet your starting line for the XC1. Riding to the line first in points. Coming off his first career win at Snowshoe before summer break. The Magna One Motorsports Husqvarna, Jordan Ashburn. Riding to the line. Right into the line next, the 3-4-2, fourth place in points on the Rockstar Husky, Craig DeLong. Right into the line next, fifth place in points, the Rev Motorsports Gas Gas Ride, Grizzly Grant Baylor. 
Right into the line next, sitting sixth in points on the Coastal Racing Factory Gas Gas. He's rough, he's rowdy, Ricky Russell. Riding to the line, seventh in points. He rides the FMF Factory KTM out of Connecticut, Josh Toes. Riding to the line next, making his return to GNCC. Out of South Carolina on the Ampro Yamaha, Stu Baylor. Making his return to GNCC as well, the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna out of Williamstown West by God, Virginia, Fad Duval. Riding to the line next. The 5-2-3 Ampro Yamaha of Lane Michael. And finally, making his pro debut here today, the 407 Honda on the Steel City Men's Clinic, Honda Power Sports back Honda, Ben Nelko. And that, ladies and gentlemen, your starting line for the XC1 Pro Class. And as our riders get in place, I believe we will turn it over to our Director of Racing Operations, Mr. Tim Cotter. Thank you, Mike. We'll let these pro riders get set. If we could have your undivided attention here to the front row. Ladies and gentlemen, today is 9-11. 21 years ago, 21 years ago, this world changed. And it was the second attack on our soils, but probably the only one in our lifetimes And when people got up to go to work that morning, it was a beautiful day, at least here in West Virginia and in New York City and all across our eastern seaboard. America was doing well. And then the first plane flies into the World Trade Center in New York. And at that point in time, we thought we had an accident. When the second one hit, we knew we were under attack. When the third one hit the ground in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and then the next one into the Pentagon, it would all change from there. 21 years later, the resolve of this country is amazing. And the fact that we are able to sit here on a scout ranch in West Virginia and ride our dirt bikes makes us the greatest nation in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, freedom isn't free. And those men and women that serve in our military and protect our neighborhoods, we honor them today. And so we know that many of you on this starting line actually fought for our freedoms and protect our communities. And we'd ask that you please step forward and join us at the front row. These are men and women that have put their life on the line to protect our freedom. We know you have, there's several out there. Come on up. We have done this at every start here at this Scout Ranch, and we have a coin for you. It's a challenge coin. The challenge coin has our Moto Hero logo on it. And it says, thank you for your service from your GNCC racing family. Here's one coming up. Here's a couple of more. If you are in our crowd today, if you are along our fence line, you are welcome. We ask that you come up here and let us honor you. With us today is the West Virginia Army National Guard. And they are bearing our flag here today. 
these men and women coming up. Folks, these are the real moto heroes of our sport. The obvious, we look at our front row here and we call you moto heroes. And you indeed are some of the best athletes on the planet. But these men and women that are behind me and before you are the real moto heroes of the day. So GNCC families, please put your hands together and show our support for these men and women and all of the men and women that have served our country, that protect our freedom, that keep us our neighborhoods safe and keep us healthy. We pay tribute to them. Just earlier today, as we do every week, we honored our moto hero. His name is Cruz Johnson. Cruz raced in the 10 o'clock race. I just saw him come across the finish line. And with tears in her eyes, his mother came to me and said, this is an amazing day. That Cruz finished the race. His birthday was yesterday. And she said, my husband was a state trooper here in West Virginia. And my son's name is Cruz because we delivered him in the front seat of the cruiser on the way to the hospital. And that's your GNCC brother. And there's many of them just like it. So our testimony goes out, our, 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 uh, uh, thank, our thankfulness goes out to Cruz and all that are like him. Ladies and gentlemen, as we start every race, what is special about GNCC and our racing family is that we have a guy like Ricky Towery. And Ricky is gonna put us in the attitude of prayer before we get ready to go do battle. So ladies and gentlemen, our friend, Ricky Towery. Thank you, Tim. Hey, let's do a good, Lord, and let's have a word of prayer together this afternoon. Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us to enjoy our sport. We thank you for bringing us back together after a summer break to have some more fun together. We ask that you will watch over these rides this afternoon. Lord, keep them safe. Let them go out there and have a good time together. Be it the spectators. We thank you for the Scout family for letting us use this piece of property to enjoy our sport. Lord, we do thank you for all the military men and women, all the first responders, everyone that watches over this United States every day so we can be free to come out here and enjoy this sport. Lord, 21 years ago today, 9-11 did happen, and it changed lives throughout the United States forever, Lord. And these people today that are still mourning the loss of their family and their friends, today, 21 years later, we ask that you still give them people some comfort that they may find through you. We just thank you once again. We know we wouldn't be standing here 21 years later if you didn't look after us and protect us and guide us and lead us. And we thank you for that. We ask that you'll keep on doing that in the days and the years to come so we can keep coming out here and having more fun. We've already had so much fun already all weekend. We just ask that you let us have a couple more hours this afternoon and then take us all home safely so we can get back together again one day to have some more fun. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank you, Ricky. This morning, or yesterday morning rather, I was stopped by an individual that had never been to a GNCC race. He was here as a contractor on the property. And he said, hey, I wanna talk to you. He said, I've never been to a place quite like this that when the national anthem played, everybody on the facility stopped. And I said, partner, we do that every week. Actually, we do it eight times a week. And everyone does stop. And it is a shame that we are an anomaly. So if we could all pause for a moment for the next minute and 30 seconds and listen to the words of our national anthem and be appreciative for our freedoms. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and join singing as we honor America. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what 
so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er oh, the land of the free and the God bless the USA, man. If that doesn't get you fired up and ready for some GNCC, my friend, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Check your pulse, because that was as good as it gets. Well, we are just about ready to go as the start sequence begins. Our armed forces putting our flag away. And again, want to welcome everybody watching at home on racertv.com. We're back. Summer break is over. And it's time to go GNCC racing. Silly season, as we call it. The last four rounds of this 2022 championship. Jordan Ashburn coming off his first career overall win. Stu Baylor's back. Thad Duvall is back. We want a storyline, we got it, baby. All right, DJ Judd, remove the meat. As we are just about ready now. Getting a good, clear start line. And all attention gonna turn down. To Ricky Towery down there on turn number one as the maestro himself is just about ready to get us rolling. And Ricky Towery lets these riders know one minute, guys, one minute, one minute, and we'll be ready to go GNCC racing here at the Mountaineer GNCC. As the adrenaline gets going, the blood is pumping. Who put in the work over summer break? We're about to find out. Here at the Mountaineer, the Rocky Mountain ATV MC, Mountaineer GNCC is Ricky Towery now looking down at the watch and lets these riders know, shut them down, shut them down, shut them down. We're now just 30 seconds away from a flag drop and I gotta ask you, Beckley, West Virginia, are you ready to go GNCC racing? Oh, but that's good, that's good. But hey, this is the Mecca of off-road racing. This is the United States of America on 9-11. Are you ready to go GNCC racing? 10 seconds for row number one, the XC1 Pro Class. Bang, and we're off. Oh, rough start for the Ampro Yamaha guys. Stu Baylor, Lane, Lane uh, Michael gonna pull it from the back of the pack. And your points leader, no, it's gonna be the 2-1-2 Coastal Racing Gas Gas Ride of Ricky Russell grabbing the whole shot and the early lead. And we turn our attention now to the XC2 250 Pro Class. Ryder Lafferty, Benjamin Herrera, Angus Reardon, Cody Barnes in 10 
10 seconds. Lyndon Snodgrass, Liam Draper, Mike Wachowski, Hunter Bush, Jesse Ansley, Evan Smith, Rudy Barbosa, Simon Johnson, Tommy Watts, Johnny Gerrard, and Jonathan Johnson. Here we go, jockeying for position out in front. Oh, the 198 with a little checkup from the neck up. Liam Draper says, hey, how you doing? I'm gonna go get me a whole shot. And we turn our attention to row number three now, the FMF XC3, your 125s in 10 seconds. Brody Johnson, Eli Childers, Drew Calloway, Max Fernandez, Dakota DeVore, Zachary Garris, Jason Liskum, Zach Hayes, and Jake Froman. One twenty-five is ripping. The five seventy-five out front. That is gonna be Zachary Garris grabbing the whole shot and early lead in the one twenty-five class. As we turn our attention now to the two fifty A. In ten seconds, JoJo Cunningham, Tyler Palmer, Cooper Jones, uh, Zachary Davidson, Nathaniel Tasha, Burps, Jason Tino, Gavin Simon, Garrett Mundy, Bolton Beroth. Will Steven Piper, Kylan Pittman, Sebastian Tavern, Mike DeLosa, Dylan Carreno. Oh, coming around the outside. That's going to be the 9 2 2 of Grant Davis grabbing the whole shot and early lead. As we turn our attention now to the Open A class, Neil Inman, Ezra Prime, Lucas Hole in 10 seconds. Huck Jenkins, Dylan T. Dela Cruz, Cole Whitmore, Saint Merle, Samuel Evans, James Clark, and Joshua Ellis. Jockey in for position, getting clean through turn number one. Oh, it's side by side. That's going to be the 29 of Neil Enman grabbing the whole shot and early lead there as we take a look now at the four stroke A lights. Ryan Piper, Aiden Myers, Colton Shields, Levi Elliott. In 10 seconds, Caleb Baltimore, Lance the Machine, Machino, Chase Landers, Russell Smith, Ty Ely, Matthew Hollenbeck, Luke Brown, Mitchell Owen B, Hayden Dillon, Matthew Davis, Kate Henderson, Cole Forbes, Lane Whitmer, Samuel Goins, and Jack Joy. Who wants a good battle out front? That's going to be... Woo, that was tight. That was between Cole Forbes and the 581. A little too close to Cole. Here we go, 150A. Just about ready to roll in 10 seconds. Toby Cleveland, Brady Weimer, Cameron Madison, and Jack Walker. And here we go, 150A class, four riders in total. Battling it out. Good and clean. That's a 719 out front. That's Jack Walker aboard the gas gas ride. Going to grab a whole shot there. And here we go with the junior A 25 plus. Evan Maynard, Paul Fitzwater in 10 seconds. Matt Servant, Gregory Funk, Andrew France, Brady Myers, Jonathan Harker, Andrew Boggs, and Braden Moore. You make it a joy to work here. Thank you. I'm out here with all the fans. This is good. There we go. Get it. The 821. That's going to be the 429 on the helmet. That was Brady Myers grabbing a whole shot right there. And here we go. Vet A30 plus in 10 seconds. Danny Hoff, Joshua Wyatt, Louis Yaquez, Mark Carrasco Jr., Michael Funk, Kyle Turnus, Shane O'Banion, Robbie Norwood, Matt Sorge, and Tom Truxel. Through turn number one, and here we go. Side-by-side -side battle. That's going to be, ooh, didn't quite catch that. I think that might have been the 801 Honda of Tom Truxel grabbing the whole shot there. We turn our attention now to the senior A40 plus in 10 seconds. Joe Marsh, Frank Messina, Shotgun, Sean Remington, Joe Dean, Vinny Tomich, Zach Baldrich, and Darren Darmus. Oh, does it feel good to be back at GNCC. Here we go, senior A, 40 plus. Here they come. A 74 and the 76, side by side. It's gonna go to shotgun Sean Remington. Automatic, that guy. How about the 250B coming up next? Andrew Inman, Chandler Taylor, Tyler Shields in 10. 
in seconds. Bain Croft, Caleb Lane, Ty Atkinson, Tyler Lester, Caleb Hines, Logan, Pellegrini, Peyton Feather. There you are, Peyton. We missed you this morning. Jaden Wilson, Caden Sims, and Robert Delilah, the fourth. Who wants it? Some heavy hitters coming out of the youth class in this 250B class. Little check up from the neck up. Is it going to cost them? It is. That's going to be the 991. I think that was Peyton Feather grabbing that one. 425 on scoring. You can hear dad now. Race the track in front of you, son. Here we go. Open B in 10 seconds. Dylan Fleming, Darwin Rodriguez, Eugene Lucente, Logan Moore, John Wood, Randy Smith, Isaac Prunty, Victor Dregslewinski, uh, Jacob Maynard, Tyler Hamrick, and Mason Hill. There we go. Good, clean, every rider on two wheels. That's a 3 3 1. We're going to be the 4 3 of John Wood out of East Sparta, Ohio, aboard the KTM. And here we go with the four stroke B lights. Landon Beatty, Andrew Post, Thomas Allen in 10 seconds. Brian Kubix, Rayleigh Messer, Drew Hoffman, Lane Morris, Wade Tucker, Dakota Cunningham, Landon Hamilton, Brock Belsoul, Ash Brewer, Trenton Hole, Preston Horton, and Nicholas Thompson. Making her way around. That's the 129. It looked like 427 on the helmet. That's Dakota Cunningham on that six long care uh, backed Kawasaki ride. 150B coming up next. In 10 seconds, Ethan Dingle, Robert Wise, Ranger Emmons, Andrew Seegers, Owen Barnes, and Ryan Gribben. Buzz, buzz, baby. 150B. Scooting. That's the 216 out front. Robert Weiss going to grab the whole shot there on that Husqvarna ride out of New Jersey. Junior B, 25 plus coming up next. In 10 seconds, Benjamin Fricks, Ryan Miller, Leroy Petri, with Ben Wade, Jimmy Murphy, Joshua Vitale, Taylor Myers, Colton Hawk, John Bottomy, and Billy Saliga. That's Colton Hawk out front leading the way into turn number one. Can he turn it into a hole shot here? Oh, gets the door shut on him right there. That's going to be the 925. Billy Saliga taking the hole shot away from him and carrying that early lead. Here we go. Vet B, 30 plus. Adam O'Dell, Brian Restorzak, uh, Larry Hopper, Scott Hopper in 10 seconds. Julio Lubiana, Luis Pena, jo Joseph Ward, Nick Plank, Ryan Ford, Charles Scott, Alex Cruz, Tasso Dorati, Sasha Jurek, Ryan Tucker, and Eric Kettering. Vet B, 30 plus, jockeying for position right now. Everybody got her on two wheels. There goes the four, three, seven. That is going to be Alex Cruz cruising in for a whole shot right there. And I believe we got one row left. That's going to be your senior B, 40 plus. Going out to duke it out for three hours at GNCC as Ricky Towery readies himself. And we are ready to go in 10 seconds. Adam Nastic, Cody Hosta. Holzatan Ramos, Michael Swartz, Dave Youngless, and Brett Maynard. Here we go. Woo. Senior B, 40 plus. There's track sweep. Here we go, coming around turn number one, a 184 out front. Cody Hosta, can he get it? Yes, bang, that's it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got a clear, safe start line. You folks are free to move about the country. If you're at home watching on Racer TV, head to the kitchen, get yourself a beverage. We're going to take a word from our sponsors, and when we come back, the Mountaineer GNCC after this. Service to others and respect. During unprecedented times, first responders across the nation are working hard to keep us and our families safe. 
This week, we take time to pay homage to these selfless individuals across the nation, the ones putting their lives on the line every day for our freedom. First responders, the GNCC Racing Nation owes you it all. From the bottom of our heart, thank you. We all have our reasons to accomplish, to work hard. We share a common goal, to be the best. Keep fighting, put in the work, never take the easy way. Your drive and determination fuels our passion. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us. Ben Kelly here, 2021 GNCC champion. Subscribe to Racer X and get yourself a fresh FMF t-shirt. of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kemetic Gasket seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kemetic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kemetic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kemetic. Kemetic Gaskets sealing championships since 1989. This Racer TV broadcast is brought to you by Specialized. Specialized Turbo E-Bikes. It's you, only faster. And by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. Well, hello everyone and welcome to Almost Heaven. This is round 10, the Rocky Mountain ATV MC Mountaineer GNCC. My name is Griffin Cotter. Filling in for Rodney Tomlin, Mikey Waynes will be joining us later, but in the booth with me now, we have Megawatt Matt Watson, and as always, Johnny Gallagher. Boys, we're looking at a complete contrast to the weather we saw yesterday, but as you can see on screen, Mother Nature has taken her toll on this uh, Mountaineer racetrack. Johnny? Yeah, you know, it's a beautiful day out today. The sun is shining, and uh, 
As your father would like to say, it's a uh, Chamber of Commerce day here in Beckley, West Virginia, and it truly is. Uh, we got a light breeze, but the temps are perfect, and the, uh, the sun is just glowing. But as you can see from the camera shot here at the 8-mile marker, it's going to take a few days and quite a bit of wind to dry out this Mountaineer race course. Uh, it's going to be slick, it's going to be technical, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun for us to watch. Megawatt, you were at the finish line uh, all morning looking at our, our morning race and our youth race. What were you seeing from that small vantage point there at scoring? Well, I could tell you, Griff, by the time we moved into the AM race, the youth racers, they had the sloppy mud. It was wet. It was falling off the bikes. It was dripping off the visors. As we moved into the AM, uh, uh, AM race, it got a little tackier. It started thickening up a bit, and we really started seeing some clean front number plates, some clean chest protectors, and guys that still had clean vision. So seeing quite a bit of difference in a matter of an hour and a half to two hours, well, talk about three hours to four hours now, we're going to see a totally different track than we have all day. A few surprises from this morning, but Rachel Archer able to get things done there in that WXC class. Uh, but now we are here in our pro race. We'll go back and we'll take a look at our start replays. So coming in here with the XC1, all eyes on Jordan Ashburn, the return of Ricky Russell coming off the start after a long summer break. Sporting that reverse number plate background is the number three of Jordan Ashburn, and he gets off to a great start, Johnny. Yeah, it looked like he was going to pull this off. He was to the first turn first, but Ricky Russell just able to make that quick pivot, take the dive, and beat him to the line there, grabbing that uh, XC1 Pro hole shot. A great start by the number 989 of Thad Duvall as well. In our XC2 class, uh, it was close all the way up into the marker, and I believe that we're going to see... Liam Draper capture this whole shot here. Yeah, you see Draper from around the outside, man. He really just sent it in there. Went real deep, but was still able to get on the gas. Johnny Gerard drag racing him there down at the end, along with uh, looked like the uh, 347 of Evan Smith as well. We see a couple of riders down there in the first turn. Looks like that was uh, Angus Riordan, one of our top front runners there in that XC2 class. So he's going to have his work cut out from him here on lap number one. Really Notice. good job by Draper, though, able to keep that thing under control. Because like you said, he run it in deep, Johnny. Yep. And it's been real easy to slip and lose out of that race line, lose control of the race line, but did a great job holding Gerard off. Moving on here is our XC3 class. believe it is the 575 of Zachary Grease there capturing the whole shot in our FMF XC3 off to a great start. Something that stuck out for me there, you had all your players in the XC1 whole shot. Where was Lyndon Snodgrass? Uh, I didn't actually see Snodgrass there. That XC2 class, obviously a little bigger, a few more riders there, uh, a little harder to spot. But uh, if I had to guess, I'd say he's probably somewhere around mid-pack. But, you know, he's got great sprint speed. Uh, as we look here at the Yamaha track map for today, you know, he's going to use some of these sections that they're coming up to make some passes. Uh, you know, he's a rider that's going to want to get to the front, going to want to contend for the win today. And with Johnny Gerrard and Liam Draper up front and a lot of the other, as you said, contenders, he's got to get there quick before those guys get away. A bird's eye view of our Mountaineer GNCC racetrack here. We are looking at it from well above uh, well above ground here on this on this track map. And this is a little bit unique as it is a very the, the seven mile mark, which would be the furthest point out from the pits, is a ways out there, yeah. Johnny. Yeah, and that's you know, we talk so much about how the GNCC courses they're they're great for spectating because they typically call do what we call clover leaf or come back to the center many times. This track really doesn't. I mean, yes, you've got this little section among the uh, pro pits, but aside from that, no field sections, no clover leafing. It's really just one big loop all the way out around. And as much as I'd love to say around this entire property, as we know, even though the seven mile marker as a crow flies is probably several miles from here, it's still only a small portion of what this actual property is, which really gives you kind of the scope of just how big this property is that we're sitting on here at the, bum at the Summit Bechtel Reserve. Megawatt, we are here at the Summit Bechtel Reserve in Glen Jean, West Virginia, uh, one of the premier facilities on the GNCC racing circuit and a, ra and, a, and a venue that is used for the Boy Scouts of America. World Jamborees happen here. Yeah, world jamborees. Uh, we're talking in excess of how many How many scouts? What, what was the number? Hundreds of thousands uh, hundreds of, of scouts. Hundreds of thousands of scouts come down here. And, you know, it's a very unique situation when they open their doors and show us the hospitality and say, hey, our property is your property for the weekend. And uh, shows a great relationship, shows a great amount of trust between two organizations. And so proud to be here on the Boy Scout property. And we are in the middle of nowhere, really, when you look at West Virginia. And 
the infrastructure that the scouts have brought into this facility. I have five bars of LTE AT&T service. We're coming to you from uh, AT&T hardline internet here at Racer TV. So hopefully, knock on wood, our, our, our broadcast should come to you scotch-free today. Johnny, what I find unique about the property is when we take a look at it, I see three or four different tracks all in one right here. You know, of course, you see a little touch of snowshoe. I see a little bit of Ohio in there. Uh, I believe it or not, I see some Iron Man style dirt in there as well. Uh, we talk about rocks, not traditionally rock gardens down here at the reserve. Now, it, this, uh, there are a few rock gardens, but we probably don't have camera shots in them because they're in very remote sections. Um, but the majority of this course, when we talk about it being the mountaineer, people say, oh, it's rocky. Um, yeah, obviously, what we're looking at here is near perfect dirt, but I would say probably 70% of this course is covered with loose rocks. Anything from, you know, maybe the size of your fist up to, you know, a basketball or smaller. So they kind of roll around as you're riding on them. So it's kind of an ever changing surface as you're going through. The rock gardens that there are, you know, there's maybe, uh, you know, maybe a handful of them that are bigger, planted. You know, when we talk about rock gardens at Snowshoe, you talk about Volkswagens and you're, you know, you're crawling over rock ledges. There isn't near as much of that here. The few sections that there are, as I said, are kind of more spread out and they're short little jaunts through rock gardens. But, uh, you know, this place is really keeps you on your toes, um, especially with the moisture that we had yesterday, the rain. It made it incredibly slick yesterday. As you said, very slick this morning for the youth races and then uh, kind of starting to tack up in the afternoon. And what we can see here, um, obviously, as you can tell by the topography, we're kind of on the edge of a top of a power line here looking down. So the higher parts of the race course obviously are going to dry out the fastest. At the eight mile marker, which we should be seeing here soon, we saw that running water. Well, you got to keep in mind, you, you guys know you're from West Virginia. You know, water starts at the highest point, runs its way down. So even though it stopped raining late last night, early this morning, a lot of that moisture, a lot of that precipitation is just now making its way down to the creeks, the lower valleys, down below in some areas before they come up to the finish. So we're going to see these guys coming through some water. Um, I can tell you right now, the section from about the eight and a half, right where we saw there, that was actually at the eight, but from about the eight and a half to the 10, it's going to be virtually standing water down in there from the moisture that we had. Here we see Caleb Russell on screen standing at the 10 mile marker. This is the uh, FMF PowerPoint. There's a couple line options here of different ways. You can either go up the hill or, or take the uh, easy way around. Johnny, something else I'm going to point out that I've noticed, uh, aside from things starting to dry out, we're starting to see the different color in the soil. So you're going to have your shady spots, you're going to have your wet spots like you were talking about. But with the sun starting to come through, now you're going to have the trees, the shadows, and the dirt starting to change color. You're really going to have to be careful with the throttle this afternoon. Absolutely. And and the other thing, you know, Megawatt, you, you mentioned it perfectly. As the track dries out, it's going to give these guys a bit of a false sense of confidence because, you know, you'll be riding, and, and it was this way even yesterday, uh, you'd be riding along and there'd be a mile or so of trail that was great grip. You could just kind of hammer the throttle, not really worry about losing traction, get hard on the brakes, and, and be completely under control. And the next thing you know, you'd kind of just change over one valley to maybe the shade side of the mountain or a little bit more moisture there, a different type of dirt, a little bit more rock. And next thing you know, you touch the brakes, you slide off, you're into a tree, you get on the gas too hard, you're losing the back end. So uh, this track, very dynamic. It's it's changing mile by mile, almost almost turn by turn. That's what I was going to say. That can happen within mile markers. All You can right. see all four of those situations, all five of those situations within a single mile, Griff. And uh, comparing and contrasting this track from yesterday, Johnny, what are these riders seeing that's different than what you guys experienced yesterday? I think the biggest thing is the ruts. You know, yesterday, um, with the exception of a few sections down in the bottom where it really started to rut up, the track was uh, pretty hard pack and polished because it was a um, I, I don't really know. I've, I've been out of the country, but I don't know exactly what the weather's been like. Here we see our leader, Ricky Russell, the 212 Coastal Racing Gas Gas, a rider that is very comfortable in these conditions, getting his first win in a very slippery snowshoe back in 2017. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of been his M.O. Is he's Ricky's a, um, you know, he's a rider from Washington State. He rides up in the, you know, almost wet forest areas up there second place the rain now forest. Uh, looks like it, it yeah the rainforest it looks like 206 of josh toth keep in mind folks he's on that 2022 and a half or 2023 factory edition ktm there's thad duvall west virginia zone we know he's comfortable in these conditions look like craig along there right behind him so his rockstar teammate uh hard to see who that was that was johnny drawer and liam draper i believe if that I could be wrong, but I swear that was the number one of Johnny Girard. It looked Girard. like Girard yes. to me. And then the other one was the only TLD rider that I know that has, wears TLD gears, Liam Draper. Folks, I think we might have an XC2 overall leader 
uh, when we when they check in here, because here's Grant Baylor. So if that is the case, then Johnny Girard and Liam Draper are absolutely on the hammer, and they have worked their way up almost to within sight of the physical leader, Ricky Russell. Just before that picture frame, Johnny, I was getting ready to say, no, Ricky Russell's done exactly what he needed to do. He put that good start to good use. He took control of the race line, put a little gap on these guys, but all of a sudden, Johnny, as you say, may not be the case when you look at adjusted time. Yeah, and I think that is the case, because that was just the 178 of Linden Snodgrass, we know, did not have a great start. So that's your third place rider, at least we believe so, in XT2. First place, Liam Draper. Second place, Johnny Girard. And they are up physically well within the XT1 Pro Class. And at corrected time, looking like they are going to be the overall leaders here at the completion of lap number one, or very close to it. We'll get another look at him here in just two miles at the FMF PowerPoint. We'll check in again with our front runners. But, Johnny, a very unique point situation out there today with attrition. Uh, we've lost Trevor. Can, can we say that's the understatement of the century? <laughs> yeah, that is the, that is the understatement of the century. But to, to those who may not have known, Trevor Bollinger did not suit up today. Uh, bringing our, our XC1 line is dwindling. We have some new guys coming back from injury. Uh, but... So the, the way the points sit right now, you have Jordan Ashburn out front sporting that reverse number plate background. Second place on the racetrack. Physically, the second place rider competing right now, not in the points, but is Craig DeLong, who st sits in fourth place. Correct. Yeah, obviously, um, the big debate going into the break was, you know, would Jordan Ashburn be able to score enough points at Snowshoe with the absent Ben Kelly? Here's your leader, Ricky Russell, on screen. So there he is, the 212. He is through. He does have a comfortable gap here. We'll find out, is it enough to hold back that charging XC2 duo of Liam Draper? Now, the gap looks like it's grown a little bit, even. So it is possible that he might have enough of a gap here. But uh, we should be seeing, and there is the second place. Oh, look like he's, I guess they're taking a different outside line there. Um, okay, so there Toth. is Ashburn there in third, Toth in second. And they did go the long way around. Yeah, neither of those guys choosing to go up. And there, so Craig DeLong goes up. As? Oh, I'm sorry, that was Duvall and DeLong, and that is Johnny Girard. He has now gotten around Liam Draper, and I'm going to tell you what, those guys, if not, are very close to having made the pass on Ashburn and Toth, who missed the FMF PowerPoint and went around. Johnny, as we know, sometimes when you two riders get together, they tend to slow each other down just a bit. They're, they're thinking about each other. Not the case with Gerard and Draper. These guys absolutely pushing each other. They're feeding off of each other, and they have picked the pace up substantially because of this battle. Yeah, so you absolutely. have a quick switch here back on top of the FMF PowerPoint, yep, and you can see they, uh, he was right on them. He right did not on make wheel the to wheel. Pass. Uh, looks like Craig DeLong with no goggles. Uh, DeLong must have gone down there because he was actually a little bit further up ahead of Baylor. Uh, so there is the other Baylor, Grant Baylor, the Grizzly Grant. Uh, he has now made his way up the FMF PowerPoint. So somewhere between this shot right here and just up further the hill, Craig DeLong must have gone down. Now there is Lyndon Snodgrass, the 178. That would be third in your XC2 class as they run. Uh, and again, as you pointed out, Griff, here's our next camera shot with Grant Baylor working his way up through the top half of the FMF PowerPoint. Uh, and then they have another zigzag back down the hill, come back out, and then there is one of those rock guards that we were talking about. See some more of our XC2 guys working their way through here. Looks like uh, Rui Barbosa, Mike Wachowski. A little further back start for Wachowski than what we're used to seeing, typically a pretty fast start. Johnny, one thing I'm noticing uh, in all of our camera shots, and naturally we're in the middle of a forest, but I don't see the big yellow shiny root. I see some root on top but I don't see the big exposed finger roots like we see in a lot of places. Yeah, there's not, um, this track doesn't really have a lot of uh, big hardwoods, so there's not a, a lot of uh, the big tap roots, or, or should, I, should I say the big surface roots like yeah. what you're talking about there. So um, there's definitely, up, up in a couple of the sections, there's some pine forest where there is some, some roots, but, but nothing like what we would see at some of like our Ohio rounds or Indiana rounds. Right. Speaking to trail boss Ryan Eccles, this is our fourth year coming to this uh, Summit Bechtel round here in the GNCC circuit. And the first year we came here, there was, there was top soil for days. And now in our fourth year, using some of these trails, we're burning our trails in, and we, we, we've gotten down to some of that rock that lies just below the surface. Now, yeah, once you hit kind of like the hard bottom here, um, it, it's pretty hard to hurt this place. Uh, you know, Iron Man, I think we could just continue to dig deeper, 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 deeper. Um, not the case here. Ricky Russell checking in with one lap complete. We'll see if we can get live scoring to update here and see if we can get a uh, an actual update on what the corrected time is. 
when they do come through, we'll keep an eye very closely on Johnny Girard and Liam Draper. Again, Ricky Russell appears to have picked it up in the last couple miles and opened that gap up even further. So he may have done enough to uh, hang on to that overall lead. So here is the number 206 of Josh Toth coming through in the number two position on that factory Red Bull KTM. Uh, and third, we did see was Jordan Ashburn on the reverse number plate number three. I think that was him that was just crossing in there. And then just behind him should be our leading XC2 duo of Gerard and Draper. Johnny, you told us about the surface. Uh, you know, not a ton of the big finger roots, some individual rock laying on top, that type of thing. Are there any shelves, any benches out there? Do we have any of that shelf rock? Any of that real square edge stuff on any of the climbs or descents? No, there's. The, it's more kind of uh, like, like I said, just kind of loose rock. Like a quarry. Yeah, there, there's not as much uh, of of the like the big slate, the big flat rock, flat rocks that really affect traction. It's kind of more marbly, I guess, would be the best way to put it. Folks, you have a leader in the number one, the 969, Johnny Girard, on that coastal racing gas gas from XC2. We have an XC2 leader in the overall. Liam Draper, just 2.2 seconds behind him, but yet third overall. Ricky Russell's splitting the gap between those guys there. So only about a second is the lead that Johnny Girard has over Ricky Russell in corrected time. If you look at the elapsed time of 2941.2 for Johnny Girard and 2941.3. An for early pit stop here. Uh, for, is that DeLong? That is Craig DeLong. He, we saw he was missing goggles, covered in mud. He crashed right there after the 10 is what it looked like. So stopped in, just uh, a, a quick pick me up there, grabbed a new set of goggles, uh, grabbed some towels for his grips, and back out on lap number two as they head from, the way this track sets up, you have the finish line, and then directly after the finish line, they go straight into the pro pits, which is kind of a unique setup. And now they're out on their way to the Monster Mile out on lap number two. We didn't get to see them there first lap, uh, but it is one of those rock gardens that we were speaking of earlier. Yep. Impressive enough is the fact that Girard's made his way to the front. Now here's the thing, Ricky Russell had that excellent hole shot. He had clear track, he had clear vision. Girard came through the pack right. to make that happen. Not only caught the XC1, but went through that pack and made his way on adjusted time to the front, which physically sets him, you know, near the front of the pack again so well you know if we go back and, and we rewind uh several months ago uh, roughly six months ago and we talk about the, a lot of the bu buzz and chatter that was talk being talked about coming into round one in big buck it was that johnny gerard was going faster than all of the xc1 riders and was going to be a threat to win overalls uh obviously getting injured at round one uh he sat out the entire first half of the season he was able to make a comeback at round nine at Snowshoe where he won and finished third overall, uh, admittedly with very little seat time. He'd only been riding, um, you know, a couple of weeks. He had done a few sprint enduro type races just to kind of get his feet wet. But in his first back to racing action, boom, right on the overall podium in an XC2 win. I mean, this is a guy that, and, and being a New Englander, he's, he's familiar with the rocks. He's familiar with the slick. Um, definitely don't want to go handing a win over to the guy yet by any means. Ricky Russell riding well. Josh Toth, obviously a phenomenal um, rider, has a lot of technical ability and showing so running right now in second. Thad Duvall, obviously going to be a threat. It's going to be who makes the good decisions, picks the good lines today. But as we can see right here, here is Johnny Girard. Uh, he's physically up in touch now with the lead group. And Liam Draper still hanging tough there in second. You know, it, very likely that one of these guys could end up on the overall podium today. So, some people don't understand, Johnny. They're like, oh, that 250, how's he doing? Listen, three times this year in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, 250 set the fastest lap of the day. Unadilla of all places, that should be a big bike track. That should be a horsepower track. But these guys are able to focus the power of these smaller bikes, able to get better traction, able to use a little more throttle and muscle that bike around a little more, Johnny. And uh, to the people watching at home don't understand, what a real testament to the skill of Girard right here. Absolutely. You know, he's up on the pegs. He's uh, he's keeping everything going in the right direction. Uh, we did just see Stu Baylor come through there just ahead of Craig DeLong. Stu looking like he's struggling a little bit here early on lap one. Oh, Grant Baylor definitely struggling there. Grabbing a root, and you can see how quickly things can change. Change the direction of his front end. His handguard's already bent down there. We saw him kind of banging on that as he was coming through that GBC tires pit stop trying to get himself squared away. He was not able to get that pushed up. Maybe they can get that addressed when he comes in for a fuel stop a little later in the day here. Now, there is your third place XC2 rider, Lyndon Snodgrass. And you know, he's got to be thinking, man, I'm already up into the XC1, guys. Where did those top two guys 
just go, or maybe he doesn't know who's still left ahead of him. I'm sure he'll be getting some pit boards here eventually, but got to be frustrating when you're catching XC1 guys, you're riding well, and you can't even see the guys in front of you. Yeah, he was riding in no man's land. He was feeling no pressure from behind and didn't have a visual on the guys in front. Sometimes that can be frustrating, Johnny, and can get in your head, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's if you feel like you're really on it and riding well, but yet you, you just can't even match the pace of the guys in front of you. It can uh, really get to you. Look at this snarling battle. Yeah. Here's about three quarters of the XC2 class here, just uh, wheel to wheel um, coming through there. Looks like that is uh, Simon Johnson. We saw uh, Rui Barbosa in there, Benjamin Herrera, uh, all of them. Pretty much the entire XC2 class just came through in that shot. So um, it's uh, one mile marker there at the Monster Mile, and it's uh, keeping things interesting. You can see some dry dirt starting to turn up there, though, and that's going to help these guys out a lot as the day progresses. Sonny, how steep is that hill? A lot of times it's tough to tell elevation and incline on, on the TV. How steep is that hill? Yeah, that's, that hill's not steep at all. It's it's uh, it's really just where you can see, we can't see what's going on, but right where you see those guys bouncing around, that's a bunch of loose rock mixed in with a few bigger rocks there that are um, kind of like, oh, as we see a rider down there, one of our, looks like one of our A riders or possibly one of our uh, back markers in XC2 really struggling to get going, finding a hard time getting grip there. But uh, it, it, it really kind of just throws your bike off balance as we saw with, uh, as we did see with Grant Baylor there. You come in, a root, a rock, it just kind of throws your front end one way, you're pointed the wrong direction, you have no choice but to back it down, back up, get realigned and take another run at it. So more than that incline, get a good entry. Get Absolutely. a good line at Absolutely. the bottom and, yeah. and keep the bike in good position. Yeah, and a lot, you know, you see a lot of these guys doing a great, uh, great job of keeping themselves up on the pegs and uh, uh, doing a great job keeping themselves up on the pegs. And uh, if you can do that and let the bike float underneath you, you can do a much better job of, of driving forward, keeping weight on the pegs. Now, when you get your feet off and you start doing the, uh, the doggy paddle, um, as much as it can help you stay upright, it, it definitely does hurt your forward momentum. Then the bike has leverage on you, Johnny. Now all of a sudden you're just along for the ride. When you take those feet off, like, yeah, in a, in a certain situation, a certain route, the doggy paddle works. But in a situation like that, now you're off balance and the weight just goes from side to side and you're in trouble. Yep, you want to be riding the bike. You don't want it to be riding you. Here we see a way outside line. <laughs> Yeah, speaking uh, of Johnny Girard out uh, there in the num the first place overall position, we were able to catch up with him in the pits. And I don't know if he's going to say this in his interview, but a new father, Johnny Girard, is eight weeks ago uh, gave birth to his new baby. So we'll check in with Johnny. Yeah, had a good summer. Uh, you know, we uh, had a new baby after snowshoe, and uh, he was eight weeks old yesterday. Um, so just been learning how to be a dad and uh, put in a lot of work with the boys over at Ranch Russell and worked really hard and uh, feeling good coming into this race, excited to uh, get the ball rolling. It's been good, uh, definitely, you know, puts a little bit more weight on your shoulder, I should say. It makes me want to do more, do better, and, uh, you know, be a good uh, be a good leader for him and, uh, you know, just be the best, best person I can be. And uh, it's cool. It's... Uh, Fatherhood's awesome. Everyone, everyone always says, you know, you gotta, you gotta live it to uh, experience. You gotta experience it to know what it's like, and uh, it's so true, man. It's uh, the most incredible feeling in the world. It's, uh, it's beyond unbelievable, and uh, yeah, it's been good. It uh, makes me want to work harder during the week, and uh, it's good. Really good to see. Johnny Girard back at the racetrack, just a gnarly athlete, a gnarly dude, and seeing him there, you know, family guy now out here leading the race. The future is bright for the number one gas gas of Johnny Girard. Something I can attest to: his program is 100% different now with that newborn in the house, guys. I can tell you, uh, Griff, you've been around lots of kids, Johnny, you as well. But when you have one in the house uh, as a professional athlete, I promise you, the program just took a drastic change. You know, I, I there was a lot of uh, buzz, like we talked about, coming into this season um, with you know, with Johnny and, and how fast he was looking and then obviously for him to get injured. And uh, a lot of things changed, I think, at the end of last season for Johnny, winning that XC2 title um, and then just kind of the realization um, of knowing he was going to become a father. Uh, so many things going on and, and you could just see the maturation process going on with him. I mean, not that he's not, you know, been a dedicated athlete for, for a number of years now, but it was almost like something clicked in his head to say, okay, now it's time. This is it's really time for me to not only take this serious from a training standpoint, but from a 
mental preparation standpoint, calming myself because Johnny's a pretty animated, upbeat guy. He rides very animated. You know, he kind of historically has been known as the Ripper, you know, the Northeast Ripper. You know, he, he's kind of got that reputation of letting it hang out and not saying that we still won't see him do that when need be. But, you know, I think he's just he, he's really kind of come into his own. And I think uh, we're going to see a renewed and rejuvenated Johnny the rest of the season. And, and I expect to see that continue into next year. From what I've seen uh, with Johnny Girard, he has a level that very few are able to go to. When, when, when he sees something that needs done, doesn't matter how far off pace he is, he's always got a shot. Never count Johnny Girard out of a race. Yeah, his ability to answer grip, his ability to adapt uh, is absolutely incredible. And we talk about tracks change, and riders do too. Riders go through different stages in their careers, different personalities and different styles. And like uh, Johnny just said, uh, instead of grip it and rip it, really starting to change the style up just a bit it looks like uh, to me as well and smoothing things out a little bit riding faster than ever but with just a different style maybe a little less risk like you're talking about we look here now at uh the, the four mile mark at our method alley 22 shot. seconds is the lead is the, what it appeared to be for the, ricky russell now jordan ashford into the second place spot uh he has actually worked his way around josh toad there we see thad duvall johnny gerard in that group as well uh, those guys have all come through. I did not see, but I believe Liam Draper was still there as well. So now they have started to open up a gap over the next group, which is Lane Michael, uh, who we see here, the 523 Ampro Yamaha, who's made his way around his teammate, uh, Stu Baylor. Stu Baylor struggling a little bit here on lap number two and early on lap one. Oh, he has closed it back yep, up. There's a little Stu. further behind Lane when we saw him there at, at the uh, Monster Mile there just a, about two miles ago. So uh, Stu's a rider you can't ever count out. You know, he uh, obviously has been off the bike for a while. But now he's been back riding for several months, racing National Enduros. He's been racing all throughout the summer and riding daily. Um, and we've seen Stu absolutely dominate here uh, a few years ago. So we'll see if he can do it again today. And, and he certainly came down and entertained us at Loretta Lenz. Absolutely. Stu Baylor came down. And, Johnny, I have to tell you, I was expecting, you know, okay, he know a couple names. Danger with it. Let me tell you something. He'll tell you who won 450B in 2019. Okay, he will tell you who had a bad start a couple seasons ago, who was in contention, who had injuries. I was super impressed with his ability to uh, recognize the riders, identify what's going on on the track, and uh, his knowledge of uh, Loretta Lenz was absolutely impressive. And, of course, he brought his animated lifestyle, of course, to the beer tent as well. So uh, Stu put his hand on every inch of Loretta Lenz. Craig DeLong and Lyndon Snodgrass uh, making their way through this four-mile mark shot. Uh, but to get back and finish up with Stu, uh, we did get a commitment out of him to ride the plus 25 class at Loretta Lenz next year. He'll be qualifying, and we'll see him at the ranch. So take that for what it's worth, but it came out of Stu's mouth. Well... <laughs> We'll, we'll see if that comes to fruition. It, I'm sure it would be enjoyable to watch for the fans uh, and obviously to kind of put some more vested interest for GNCC fans into Loretta Lynn's. Um, there we see some more of our XC2 guys coming through. looks like uh, uh, we did see uh, Mike Wachowski coming through there. Uh, we did see Evan Smith. Looks like some more of the XC2 guys. Hard to catch numbers there. They're coming by so fast. But, uh, you know, things are starting to spread out here a little bit in that XC2 class as we get four miles into lap number two. Hey, guys, we have definitely got to give a shout-out to our man, Donnie Kelly. Now, if you don't know who Donnie Kelly is, Donnie Kelly's a mechanic for Ricky Russell. Helps out uh, the Gas Gas team, helps out a lot of riders. Suffered a heart attack on Friday. Donnie Kelly did. Uh, they put four stents. Yep, they put four stents in the other night. He's in uh, intensive care, as far as I know, and he's walking right now on Racer TV. Donnie, love you, buddy. Get well soon. Uh, totally stunned by the news. Know you're a tough guy, and uh, know that we'll see you back here today. And, track and really I'm sure soon. while he's watching, he needs to keep himself a little subdued uh, because his rider, Ricky he, Russell, the number 212, out front leading. So, Donnie, we want you to <laughs> cheer, but we want you to do so subdued. You know, just maybe a little golf clap every now and again and a, and a little go, Ricky. Let's not get too worked up. We got we to gotta, uh, let you recover, buddy. And only Gallagher would recognize that because he knows Kelly's in that bed right now. He's got an IV in, and he's cut all this stuff, and he's up right now. He's all about ricky russell up front so before we send it to a break uh, i want to get your all's takes you so right now we have ricky russell out front we have uh jordan ashburn there in the second place position in the xc1 uh johnny gerrard's threatening for an overall liam draper there as well what is your what are your thoughts so far lap number two underway lap number one in the books what do you expect this race to shake out well i'm 
<clears throat> I don't know that I'm ready to make predictions just yet for the for the outcome, but I am going to say this: things to watch for. Uh, Stu Baylor needs to kind of get things rolling if he wants to get up there and battle for the lead because that lead group is starting to charge away. Uh, we know he has the speed, we know he has the endurance, but if you find yourself there in no man's land, that time can be so hard to make up, especially on a course like this. Uh, Johnny Gerrard, if he can limit his mistakes, I feel like he can be there in battle for this one at the end. And uh, one guy that I'm really going to be keeping a close eye on today, Thad Duval. Oh. I'd really like to see him up there get a podium. How great a, a race back would that be for him to come back after such a heartbreak of a season to come back and, and put himself on a podium in his home state? Thanks, Johnny. Megawatt, you have anything to add to that? Yeah, that was my wild card. Uh, he closed it out. He covered everything pretty well. You know, uh, I'm a little off on, on, on some of these guys, exactly where we're at and, and what has happened along the course of the season with some injuries and things like that. But the wild card for me was Thad Duvall at this point. Uh, inside that top five right now has a good ride going. As the clock continues to wind, coming off injury himself, let's see how this thing plays out. One thing before we throw it to break, uh, can we take a look at that overall there? You guys happen to see anything out of place there in that number seven spot? Grant Davis, oh. seventh overall from the 250A class. No one's caught that so far. I did see him coming by well up into the XC2, but it, you know it's hard to keep track of the time. On correct time, Grant Davis right now, seventh overall absolutely hauling the mail in that 258 class. So a bunch of excitement out there on the track. Uh, I'm going to step away as we go to commercial break. When we come back, you will see Michael, Mikey Waynes here in the studio. I'm going to head to the pits. We're out halfway through lap number two. When we come back, lap number three and more of this Mountaineer GNCC here at the Summit Bechtel Reserve. Last season was my best season ever by far. I won a lot of races, I won a championship, and it was my, also my first year using Arma. And one of the things I noticed was just my ability to string good days together. You know, like especially in the summertime in Florida where you're riding every day and the heat index is 108 degrees and you're doing 230s and going to the gym and bicycle and, and all that stuff. I think in the past I've been super inconsistent day to day. Yeah, I may have a, you know, a good race here or, you know, a good day during the week there. But overall, I think where I improved the most was my consistency in my recovery. Tires, a division of Greenball Corp, has been in the tire business for over 44 years. We're passionate about developing quality tires that perform great and bring extraordinary value to our customers. tire that can handle your off-road adventures, need a reliable tire to take you from job site to job site, or simply want a tire with a beefier look that won't break the bank, then check out Kanati Tires.
USMCA has been connecting riders to certified coaches since 2016. There are over 300 active certified coaches on MotorcycleCoaching.org, and we recently launched our new mobile app, making it easy to connect with a coach and book your next training session. So here's what you do. Download the Motorcycle Coaching app, then search for coaches in upcoming classes. Once a training session is booked, riders have the option to pay for their class and even get a calendar reminder that will automatically sync to their phone. Get connected today. Even when you're the best, you never stop striving to be better. With over 40 years of experience in motorcycle sales and service, we know racing. Our inventory of Yamaha motorcycles, sport bikes, dirt bikes, ATVs, and side-by-sides is extensive and constantly changing. Stop by Lojack Cycle Sales today in Tarentum, Pennsylvania, and visit our online inventory at www.lojacks.com. Yamaha YZ, it's why we ride. How would you like to go to a school where we take into consideration how students learn best? Well, we do that. Because we find if we can build the curriculum around the things you are interested in, you're going to do a better job. The mission at On Track School is that educational success is possible while chasing your dreams. Not only will our staff help students to achieve success, they will cheer you on to the finish line. We encourage you to check out On Track School at ontrackschool.com, where we can help you chase your dreams and still get a quality education. OnTrackSchool.com, check it out. We went to Caleb's for a week, do some training, and then we had a KTM doer meeting. And then we were there for a weekend, and then I went back to Caleb's, and we started our training there. And uh, did a couple weeks, and then took another week off, and then uh, went back to Caleb's, and we were there for three weeks or so. And then um, I had a national enduro in Ohio, and then right after that, we jumped on a plane from Columbus to uh, Paris. And then uh, I was there in France for two weeks for the ISDE. Um, did a lot of walking of the special tests the week before the race. And then, you know, obviously the last week was just racing. So uh, I got back here in the States on Tuesday. And then now we're here in West Virginia. So it's been a couple busy weeks, but uh, honestly, it's been a lot of fun. I, beforehand, everyone was kind of warning me about the you know, travel and how it, it can kind of get crappy and how you feel fatigued. And I've been lucky and I feel normal. You know, I don't feel bad. I'm, I didn't get sick from tra- all the traveling and the long days and I feel good. It's always been a, a dream of mine or a goal of mine to do it at least once. And, um, you know, for me to have the opportunity to maybe go again on the trophy team, I had to go at once as a club rider and, and get the experience of you know, working on her bike and, you know, having no assistance and um, I'm glad I went. France was a great time and the terrain was pretty much, pretty much like uh, where I ride a lot in Pennsylvania, just pretty, pretty hilly and then um, a little rockier than, than, than where I'm from there in PA, but um, either way it was pretty relatable. It wasn't like a Argentina desert, you know, where they're going next year, so. Um, I would say I got a little bit lucky that way, just being, you know, similar to what I'm used to, and um, I had a lot of fun. It was long days. We were, the shortest day we had was like 160 miles, so, um, you know, we were eight hours a day, we were on the bike, so um, I, didn't feel, I didn't feel too fatigued. The mental fatigue was the worst part, just like day four, you're like, oh, I got to do this again, but um, for the most part, it was, it was a lot of fun. And welcome back, GNCC Live. Good to hear from Craig DeLong there, getting that ISDE experience. Johnny, you were there as well, man. Yeah, it was uh, it was a very challenging race week. Uh, there we go. That's the it, word. You know, I uh, obviously the all of the the riders, you know, put their best foot forward, but uh, it just didn't translate into results that anyone was looking for. Yeah. I think. But uh, hey, you'll have that sometimes. You learn from those experiences. You come back stronger. And uh, obviously, the U.S. has had great success in in the ISDE the last. Uh, several years so you know one off year and you know we'll be coming 
the back next year to RGT oh, yeah. swing. It was great to have Craig along there for the first time. You know, his brother Andrew had done that. Uh, always spoken highly to Craig about it for Craig to have the opportunity to do it on a club team, a super club team. As oh, for them. sure. Um, you know, they uh, they did very well in the uh, in, in the club team rankings, and uh, Craig himself uh, ending up in the top. Uh, I believe he ended up second overall club rider, second or third overall club rider as an individual. So uh, definitely put in some good rides and, you know, names that won't really resonate so well with uh, some of the American fans. But if you follow um, World Enduro at all and, and, and Enduro racing on the world stage, um, a guy by the name of Anton Mayo, who is a, uh, I believe, 10-time world champion, uh, is who one of the riders that Craig was battling with throughout the weekend. So, or throughout the week, um, you know, he's a little bit advanced in his age now. Uh, I think he's up in his late 30s, if not early 40s, but uh, still very, very fast and uh, actually won the final moto where wow. Craig, Craig finished third. So, um, yeah, I mean, he was in elite company and uh, rode well. So it was good to see him get the experience and, uh, you know, hopefully he's well rested and ready to go today. It hasn't started off the greatest form here on uh, the first lap and a half, but maybe when we see him here at the eight mile marker, he'll made that charge and got back up with the lead group. You know, we talk about uh, the talent here. We talk about uh, things like ISDE and such. Had a chance to meet Manny Littenbeckler at, uh, in California. KTM Hard Enduro riders uh, shooting for a world championship right now. Nice. And I believe like a three or four point battle. And he expressed his interest in possibly liking to come out, uh, liking to check us out. Come out oh, and see a GCC, maybe like to hook up with us and that type of thing. And uh, that just tells you how big our series really is, how yeah. much reach it has when those guys riding hard enduro, when they're they're riding uh, 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 the Red Bull stuff, when they're riding Ayersburg, and they're talking about GNCC. That's a testament to our series. Well, it's a testament to our series. It's a testament to our riders. Yes. And this is a testament to how fast Ricky Russell's <laughs> going because here he is, the 212 Coastal Racing Gas Gas, same as last lap, just hops right through that uh, slick little rock section like it was nothing, crossing that creek at 56-14. Last we knew, he had a 22-second lead. <laughs> He What's the light tail the of the tape? Will that lead have been extended? Will these guys have been able to make some inroads into, uh, we're at about 13 seconds right now, 14. Oh, it looking like it might be closing down just a little bit. But here comes Jordan Ashburn, 14. So it's 20, 21, 22, about 23 seconds. <coughs> so it's actually extended itself about one second. So uh, Jordan Ashburn now has opened up a gap over the third place rider. Yeah, Ashburn did not come through that section as quick as Russell. By, no. by any means. Russell was a lot smoother, was very light on the bike, and like you said, extremely slick there, Johnny. I mean, I was surprised he pushed it that quick through there. Here we've got a battle coming. Looks like it is the number 969 of Johnny Girard, physically now in third. He's got some pressure, though, from what looks to be Stu Baylor. We were talking about it. Stu Baylor needed to get going, so Thad Duvall still on the uh, tail end of that train. So this is your Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh place <laughs> riders uh, as they come through pretty much wheel to wheel to wheel there. And uh, here is Lane Michael. So he is not too far off that battle either. So that's actually about third through eighth there now that has come through at the uh, eight mile marker with your leader out front, Ricky Russell, and Jordan Ashburn kind of all by himself there in second. You know, it's interesting about Ricky Russell leading this one. Uh, I know we got Johnny Girard <clears throat> on uh, adjusted time, but I was thinking about, you know, prior to this race, I heard you guys talking about DK. Uh, by the way, hi, DK. Good to hear from you. Um, go back to earlier this season. Ricky Russell lost one of his best friends uh, and came out and won. Yep. An emotional win. Yep. And what that does for any athlete, I don't care if it's GNCC, Supercross, NFL, it kind of shuts that part of the brain off where you're overthinking about what you're doing on the track. You get in those emotions and that adrenaline. And I just kind of, in my mind, did that little circle around Ricky Russell. Like, is he going to do it today for DK? Uh, and so far, so good. I, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. With the position that Ricky's in right now, he's in a great spot. Um, you know, he's kind of the guy of that group. I mean, along with Thad Duvall, that, that they're kind of in a nothing-to-lose position. They're not Absolutely. in the battle for the championship. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're Jordan Ashburn, um, the, the worst thing you want to do on a day like today, as slick as these conditions are, as rough as this track can be, and as quick as it can jump up and bite you, is get yourself in, in, in kind of embattled in, yeah. in a fight for the win. Not saying that you don't want to take the win and, you know, if it's the last lap and, and you're able to ride within yourself, keep yourself in position to battle for a win, absolutely. Race wins are, are hard to come by. Obviously, it's taken Jordan's entire career to finally get one uh, at the last race in, in Snowshoe. If he could back it up, huge statement for him. But this is a man that's riding with an XC1, an overall championship on the line now. And he's in 
the absolute driver's seat. Yep. I mean, oh, yeah. beyond the commanding position. Yeah. So, you know, the few points difference between first and second or even first and third or fourth, inconsequential to him at this point. Um, you know, he's just needing to race against Craig DeLong. He's needing to race against Josh Toth. Um, mm -hmm. He's needing to race against the guys that are closest to him in the points. And, and the two closest guys to him, Ben Kelly and Trevor Bollinger, are, are both out right now. Um, and, and Ben, obviously, and, and Trevor, unfortunately, we know, will be out for the rest right, of the season. Right. So um, here we see Stu Baylor now at the 10-mile marker on the charge. One of the things we talked about going to break was could he get on the gas and come up through? Well, now he has displaced both Josh Toth and Johnny Girard and Liam Draper. He was behind those guys and a good ways behind them. We saw him a few miles ago as well as Thad Duvall. He's made the pass on all of those guys and looking like he is starting to pull away, meaning he is starting to close the gap up on Jordan Ashburn, who rides there in that number two spot. Yeah, right now, if you're Ashburn, uh, going back to what Johnny said, right now, you don't want to find yourself on the ground. You yeah. don't want to bend a bike, and we sure don't need a sore near wrist. Yeah. So, uh, you know, right now, management, I, I believe, is going to be a huge part of this. But when you saw Stu Baylor come through, that guy was up on the tank. Okay, <laughs> he was up there putting weight on that front end, letting the rear end work of that bike, and Stu's really found some speed over the last lap. Yeah, you know, and Stu's one of those guys that how many times over the years have we seen him and, and his brother both, you know, where you can see them where they're just not lighting the world on fire early in the race. They're kind of back there a little bit buried in the pack. If anything, at times they're losing time, and the next thing you know, we start talking about, <laughs> okay, well, you know, Stu or Grant or both are out of this one. They're, you know, they're two minutes off the lead. And then six miles later, it's, well, they made up 50 seconds in six miles. So maybe they're not out of this one yet. Yeah. Um, so, but, you know, it's still a lot of racing left to go. Stu now up into that third place position, into a podium position. Big, big strides for him in the last couple of miles. But uh, still a long ways to go if he wants to get all the way up there to Ricky Russell. But a man that is absolutely capable of doing it. You know what's funny to me right now is we're talking about a three-hour race. We're a little over an hour in. We're talking about these this stuff. But what we don't talk about, all these guys are fit. Okay, oh, We're yeah. going to talk about who has the advantage right now. Sometimes in the heat in different races, uh, motor or, or, or a lot of things, you'll talk about, you know, a guy's conditioning, a guy's fitness. Well, here we are in the toughest racing there yeah. is in the world, three hours in these kind of conditions, and are really not uh, a topic of discussion with us because all these guys in the top 20, these guys are conditioned to do that. They're conditioned to roll like that. Now, interesting that Johnny said, because I noticed the same thing, Baylor's one of these guys, uh, much like an Eli Tomac or a Jet Lawrence, the guy's better in the second half of the race. Yeah. Okay, the guy seems stronger. Whether that's true or not, it's the appearance. And he also mentioned the ability to close the gap. Few guys have that ability. And to find, like he said, 30, 40, 50 seconds, that's Stu just holding it on. Yeah. That's oh Stu yeah. charging some corners. That's Stu late breaking some markers in front of him. Yeah. Exactly what that is, his determination to get rid of that gap. And uh, a lot of guys don't have the mindset, don't have the ability to do that, although they have the speed. But being able to make that big a difference that short of time, not guys have, not a lot of guys have that ability. So Jordan Ashford now through the finish line. We did see our leader Ricky Russell work his way through there on the 212 Coastal Racing Gas Gas, the Magna One Motorsports Husqvarna. Jordan Ashford in second, and we should next be seeing the 514 Ampro Yamaha of Stu Baylor as the next machine we'll be looking for to pop out of those West Virginia woods up into the scoring chicane. Uh, so the gap back to Jordan Ashburn is 28.8 seconds is what it registers on our official timing and scoring. Here comes, oh, look at this. It looks like Johnny Gerrard has gotten, oh, nope, Baylor did check in. Uh, now that is Gerrard and Draper starting to get some, er, sorry, Josh Toth starting to get some pressure back on. So Stu Baylor back 26 seconds back from Ashburn. So definitely an overcomable gap, uh, but pushing a minute back from Ricky Russell. So he's going to need to start making some chipping away at that. Yes, we are only just barely over an hour into this, um, but at the same time, not something that you uh, want to let grow. You want to try to get that down to where you can see those guys, and that would help him be able to manage his speed, his effort, and his race a little bit better. You can see looks like Johnny Gerrard trying to catch a toe with Stu Baylor. Stu looking like he's going to go to the front. Johnny Gerrard saying, I want to go with you. And there is oh, Josh man. Toth right there putting pressure. That's two New England rippers. Thad Duvall has gotten around Liam Draper. And Thad Duvall starting to look a little racy here. So uh, pretty exciting stuff we're seeing here now with two laps complete, working on the start of lap number three. 
there we see Mama Duvall yeah. taking, uh, <laughs> taking a gander. Sure, she's be glad to be back at the races and having a dog in the fight. Here comes Lane Michael, the 523 Ampro Yamaha machine inside the top 10 running solidly. Another West Virginia native, lives in North Carolina now, but always thrived in the rocks, rocky, slicky, rocky, slicky, slick, rocky, like uh, like slick, rocky conditions of West Virginia whenever we did race here uh, as an amateur and, and coming up through the ranks. Funny talk, I talked with Thad um, early today, uh, just kind of in passing, real short conversation, just how you feeling? How you, what's the outlook coming into today? And he's like, you know, I'm gonna go have fun. It's like, good, that's that's what I wanted to hear. Um, I think that's probably what's important for, for guys like Thad Duvall right now. Um, focus on having fun, focus on remembering why I race. You know, yeah, I, I need the paycheck, sure, but uh, go out there and have fun and kind of let everything else go at the end of the season and reset the deck next year, but carry that momentum into the off season. Yeah, for sure. You know, with Thad, um, you know, it's uh, there's a lot of chatter about, you know, people's career directions and mm -hmm. who's going to end up on one team. Ricky Russell struggled a little bit through the Monster Oof, Mile this well time. Dab. Last time he was up on the pegs and straight line right through there. This time it was a little more of a serpentine pattern like he was getting <laughs> chased by an alligator. Uh, <laughs> just doing the best he can to just keep moving forward. That's that section you talked about talked about Johnny so maybe it's getting disturbed a little more some of that rock getting shoved out into the main line sure it's gonna be you know, harder to get that square drive like you said didn't look quite so smooth so arrow straight that time you got to remember you know there's a couple hundred amateur riders out here <laughs> right. as well that you know they're they're chewing these lines up Jordan Ashburn feet off and uh, definitely keeping a little bit more uh, forward momentum going but still you can see that section really starting to get slick interesting look for Jordan as uh, was pointed out earlier in the show by Griff reverse number plates there Heck with yeah. the uh, Red numbers, white plates, signifying he is the points leader. So I'm sure a very prideful moment for him lining up today with uh, with that. That's something that uh, you know he's he's seen so many other ri riders run during his career, and now it's his turn to, to show off how uh, how great of a season he's having and in the driver's seat for this 2022 championship. Here we see Stu Baylor, the 514, still there. Uh, look at this, Josh Toth has gotten around Johnny Girard, as has Thad Duvall. Toth now up, pushing on the back of. Uh, Baylor, there is Duvall. Here is Johnny Girard, the XC2 leader. And hot on his heels is still the 198 Aleem Draper. So, you know, you're Johnny Girard. You were physically leading this race a lap ago, or leading this race on corrected time a lap ago, but yet you only have a two-second gap over second place in XC2. No doubt. So it's a bit of a uh, bit of a conundrum for him. You know, he's got to really focus on winning that XC2 uh, race. That's, you know, what his bonuses are paid for. And although he would love to be in a position for the overall, I'm sure his main focus for the day is going to be to race Liam Draper and uh, Snodgrass and whoever else may get up in there uh, for that XC2 win for the day. Lane, Lane Michael just by there through the Monster Mile. So that's about your top, uh, looks like Lane Michael there in eighth place. So next we'll be waiting on Lyndon Snodgrass. But actually, I'm sorry, Craig DeLong will be our next XC1 rider. But Lyndon Snodgrass has eclipsed him on corrected time. So uh, there is DeLong who would be sitting uh, s s ninth and seventh in the XC1 class. You mentioned Lane Michael. He almost looked like in position to get the whole shot. Uh, he had a oh, good yeah. run. Yeah, he had a good run going in there, and then all of a sudden he had like laps mm -hmm. uh, out of the hole. So uh, put put himself uh, in, in the deficit column before he really got started there and uh, had to work himself out of a hole. And nothing easy on the first couple laps for him, I'm sure. The 178 of Lyndon Snodgrass, he rounds out the podium as they run currently in that XC2 Pro Lights class. Again, with the uh, reverse number plate signifying that he is the points leader so far on the 2022 season. Uh, Snodgrass has put a really consistent season together. Uh, obviously, the, the kind of hands-on favorite for the championship, Johnny Girard, last year's champion, going out in uh, round one. Mike Wachowski, another podium, uh, I'm sorry, championship contender, has had a real hit-or-miss season with some wins and then some real questions about you know what's what's been going on yeah. with him kind of fading and, and obviously not uh, not up front here today. So it's really been the kind of the Snodgrass show. Uh, Cody Barnes has shown some flashes of brilliance. Some other riders have been up in there for some podiums per race, but it's been Snodgrass that's uh, just really been consistent throughout the season. Yeah, finally turning it on for Snodgrass, certainly in good position. Hey, going back to, to the other the other points that are XC1 points that are uh, Jordan Ashburn was talking with Chuck Lamaster this morning about this. Um, you know the chatter, social media chat. Well, yeah, but Stu Baylor. Oh, yeah, I, but now I got to yeah, leave. But, I'm not going to have these conversations. And I don't want. I'm with you. I, I said, here's the thing. GNCC. We've gotten to the point now where 
showing up, lining up every round is almost as important as anything else. And Jordan Ashburn, that consistency has put him in the driver's seat this season. So you cannot take anything away, in my opinion at least, you can't take anything away from the success that Jordan Ashburn's had this year. Absolutely not. Here's, here's the reality of it, Mikey. Everybody goes to the starting line at round one. The rules, how the points are paid, mm -hmm. how many races there are going to be for the season are established before you go to the line at Amen. round one. So every one of these guys knows. 13 rounds, 30 points to win, 25 for second, 21 for third. And I'm not going to list the rest as they go down. <laughs> as the season ends at round 13 when you cross the finish line, the guy who has the most points wins the championship. <laughs> That's how this Easy works. One, two, There's three. no debate about it. Sure. This isn't, well, if this guy would have been here, well, you know what? He, he wasn't. It, yeah. uh, you know, a wormhole didn't come and suck these guys Bingo. Up. They crashed. They got injured. It's unfortunate. It's part of the game. They were trying to win a race. They were trying to put themselves in position, and they got injured, and they weren't able to race the next event, thus removing them from the discussion for the championship. <laughs> this is not something that was a freak thing that yeah. happens, this is part of racing. Absolutely. And it's the same opportunity for everyone. Bingo. Jordan Ashburn, by being consistent, by being there every race, has put himself in position to battle for this championship. It's not his yet to take home. Sure. He still oh, has absolutely. to make it through this absolutely. round and three more rounds, or at least until he can accumulate enough points that nobody can eclipse him for the right. year. At that point, he gets to say he's the champion, and nobody else gets to say anything about it unless right. they're an idiot. <laughs> uh, you know Boom. what? Uh, Boom! You, Johnny, Mic drop. And that, that you know what is something I have to cover on a weekly basis. Yes. You know, woulda, coulda, shoulda, and all this. And that guy home talking to crap. Well, he's obviously not here. Yep. <laughs> okay. He's <laughs> not it. trackside or on the track either yeah. one. Yeah. He's at home giving an opinion based on you know great camera work. You know, sure. that's what he's doing, giving an opinion. But what it could have, should have. At round one, it reads zero all across the board, yep. even with new math. Okay. Three plus <laughs> three well, six. I don't know. Four plus plus two math. Six. <laughs> Five plus one six. I don't care how you add it up. <laughs> Seven minus one six. Yeah. Okay. All those things equal six. And to Johnny's credit, listen, that's what it takes at the end of the series. Yeah. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Down with that. I couldn't care less about woulda, coulda, shoulda. That's it. That's and it. I, I think that brings us back to a, a great point with, you know, with Jordan being in the position that he's in, really, truly being in the driver's seat for this championship through you know, and the funny thing is, Jordan hasn't done anything different this year than he's done his entire career. Exactly. He, yeah, and when I say that, kudos to Jordan. That win at Snowshoe was big for him as far as just getting that monkey yes. off his back. Of You know, there was there was chatter for so many years. Jordan's going to be the most accomplished, you know, um, fastest GNCC bike rider to never win a race. That was the chatter. That's what yeah. people were saying. Right. And, and, and honestly, the same decision-making processes, the same riding style that led him to be in that discussion are the same ones that have him in the position ha holding on at this point with both hands quite firmly to this championship yes. for 2022 because he doesn't take the big risks. Bingo. He doesn't ride outside of himself. When you see Jordan, you see a rider that's calm, calculated, you know, he's smooth, he's technically efficient, uh, he doesn't use a lot of energy. Y yes, we know he's fit. Yes, we know he's fast. We're not saying he's not fast but he doesn't run the ragged edge. You yep. don't see Jordan Ashburn hanging it out. You don't see him making those crazy last lap charges. Um, that's kind of been a detriment to, in many people's minds over the years. Like, hey man, if you would just take those couple chances, you could be battling for wins. Well, you know what? It may, it's looking like it very likely will pay off for him in 2022 yes. with the championship. You know, uh, he works the system because the system works for him. Yeah. And, and to Johnny's credit, listen, the bottom line is those same techniques and style are exactly what put him in this position. He's not doing anything different nope. right now. He's riding with the same style, intensity level, and fitness that he's always had. And like he said, he now has a lock on it. Now, uh, getting that weight off his back, getting that monkey off his back, man, oh, man, that brings the confidence in. Absolutely. So that adds, that, that adds another element. But not crossing that line. Only so many guys, uh, Johnny, as you know, have the ability to do that. When you find that line, you want to ride as close to it as possible, but to the inside, right? Yep. You don't want to cross that line. Very few guys had the ability. Caleb Russell, one of those guys, could cross the line and bring it back when it kicked yeah. out or catch it when it took that nasty Whoa, Whoa. look and at as this. I say speaking that, of, speaking of. <laughs> as I say that. Jordan Ashburn has caught Ricky Russell. Look Is at that. that a result of... Him picking up the pace, or did Ricky lose time? We'll wait and see how far back is Stu Baylor. Has Jordan Ashburn just found another gear? Dave. Heard the internet trolls talking about <laughs> how he just doesn't ride hard enough. He doesn't deserve this championship. He doesn't deserve these wins. And he said, oh, yeah? Watch this throttle cable stretch on this uh, <laughs> this Husky F3, FC350. 
and he said, I'm gonna cross this line. So there, he's, it looks to me that Jordan Ashburn has turned up the wick because look at this, Thad Duvall now putting pressure on wow. Stu Baylor. So Thad Duvall saying not wanting to let this podium get away. Here comes Johnny Girard. Johnny Girard still in the fight for this one, definitely on corrected time. Uh, definitely for a podium for sure. Looks like he has put a little bit of a gap on this rider right here, the 198 of Liam Draper. Haven't really talked enough about him, I don't think, today. Josh Toth now has dropped back. He was the rider that we saw charge back up and kind of putting pressure on Baylor, but now has fallen back to behind those guys. But Draper very looking very solid and very strong here today. Mikey, not quite halfway in. I got to tell you, business has picked up. Oh, hey, absolutely. Business has picked up at the front of yeah. the back right now. And I have to tell you, uh, the pace to me looks like it's starting to quicken just a bit through some of these sections. Uh, and Johnny, I believe that's due to the traction. I believe that's due to the conditions. Uh, that dirt has moved a good bit, starting to dry out. But I don't think it's as rutted and squared up and, 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 and turned up as we thought it would be. Well, and it, you always see in the afternoon track, these guys will start to develop their own lines. They don't ride the exact same lines that the AM race rides or the youth race rides. And sh surely not the same uh, lines that the ATV guys use. So those lines will start to develop. They'll start to be more noticeable. And you'll see these guys will be able to carry more speed into them because it's more obvious kind of where they're headed next. Um, that's why we a lot of times see the, the lap times continue to drop as the race goes on, the lines develop. Or like you said, in a day like today where they very likely that the grip is getting better as the day goes on. The sun's out, the wind's blowing, all things that are uh, adding to a, a much more rideable or raceable racetrack. The one thing I will say, you know, we talked about, we've, we've talked a lot about Ashburn, rightfully so, points leader, um, you know, up now battling for the win again today. Um, but man, it, it just, ah, you know, don't, don't, yeah. don't push it too hard, Jordan. Oh. You know, you're in the driver's seat for this championship, but obviously if you're feeling it, you got to go for it. Uh, you know, and, and we've heard over the years, whether it be in GNCC or in, in Moto, or even you, you know, you could play the prevent defense in football. You know, when, when you've got the big lead, you just, you, you play not to lose or you race not to lose. You never want to race that way. Obviously, Jordan doing what he needs to do. And if he's feeling it, he needs to get up there and just let it rip. Johnny, when you throttle out, your bike is not designed to react that way. Okay, your closing distance on that corner or your, your closing speed on that climb, when you start throttling back and play too defensive, now your timing could get off. The bike's not going to react the same. Uh, and, and you're simply looking at things. The smartest thing to do is find that pace, find that comfortable pace, I believe, and stick with it. You know when you have to turn it up, if you do, if you don't. Uh, and that unnecessary chance, you and I have seen prevent defense cost games yep. more than I, once. I'm from Cleveland. Uh, oh. uh, I'm so sorry. Say no more. <laughs> so sorry. Yeah, my Say apologies. no more. Sounds like, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like Griff Cotter's got an update for us down in the pro pits. Down here in the Magna One, Husqvarna pits uh, of Jordan Ashburn. We hear that he is uh, pushing towards that number one spot. Ashburn finds himself 40 points in front of the, or in the points lead right now uh, since Ben Kelly out with in, uh, injury. What I wanted to add to this, guys, is not only does Magna One have the points lead here in the XC1 bike class, they also are holding on, even by a thin margin, the, the XC1 points lead on the quad side as well. But you guys are talking about the consistency that is Jordan Ashburn, and that is a, is a team theme here in the Magna One pits. They're a group of hardworking people, and this is a satellite team. It does receive some factory support, but not very often do you see a satellite team like Magna One hold the points lead in the XC1 bikes, let alone both XC1 bikes and XC1 Pro quads. Back to you guys. Yeah. Griff nails it right there. That was a point where I'm sure we'd have gotten to today, but Griff brings it up. Magna One Motorsports, Husqvarna on this side, the Yamaha on Saturday. Hey, they are points leader. Pro bikes, pro ATVs coming out of the Magna One pits. Huge stuff. So can Jordan Ashburn hang on? Can Rissy, Ricky Russell hang on in this one? Will Johnny Girard get it? We don't know. We're just getting started. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back with more GNCC here on Racer TV. Brown's RV Superstore is family owned and operated and staked their reputation on offering you the finest RVs available in their McBee, South Carolina RV dealership. 
Brown's RV Superstore carries motorhomes, fifth wheels, travel trailers, and toy haulers, and keep a huge inventory of new and used RVs in stock for you to choose from. They offer top dollar for your RV trade-in and help you get the RV financing you need. As a part of the GNCC family, Brown's RV Superstore, in partnership with Vengeance Toy Haulers, offers sponsorship packages for every level of racer with discounts and continued savings on your new toy hauler. Brown's RV Superstore has dedicated themselves to complete customer satisfaction specializing in providing a positive start to your rv adventure they look forward to customers coming back to share their tales from the road call brown's rv superstore today at 877-805-3658 or visit their website at brownsrvsuperstore.com where family fun begins We all have our reasons to accomplish, to work hard. We share a common goal, to be the best. Keep fighting, put in the work, never take the easy way. Your drive and determination fuels our passion. Good morning, my name is John Coffey, an AMSOIL dealer from Southern Virginia. Today's AMSOIL spotlight is on, it's going to be on some of our AMSOIL diesel fuel additives. The first one we have is our AMSOIL diesel injector clean. That virtually eliminates any kind of deposits on the injectors. It increases the, uh, the performance of your vehicle, improves horsepower. It's a lubricant also. It will also lubricate the injectors and your injector pump. So you eliminate any problems with that. Uh, it'll actually increase fuel economy up to about four and a half percent. So with the cost of diesel fuel today, any little bit will help. The next one is our Cetane Boost. That improves combustion. It also helps with startability and it'll actually improve the, the Cetane rating on your diesel fuel by up to seven points. And then we have our diesel fuel with the cetane boost so that's kind of like a combination of these two items right here in one bottle that goes in every tank fuel, tank full of diesel fuel that i put in my tank right there then we also have an injector clean with a cold flow improver for cold uh, temperatures where you need to uh, make sure that the, the diesel fuel is not going to gel up on you and then the last one here is kind of the granddaddy of them all it kind of has all of them together it's the diesel injector clean, it's the cetane boost, and it has a cold flow improver all in one bottle. Now, uh, in the winter time, I will switch to that in my vehicle. So that helps with uh, the, the flow of the diesel fuel. It won't clog up the filter where you have a problem with that and it's just not gonna flow anymore. We also have one other product. It's a diesel recovery. So if you ever actually did have uh, a problem with the fuel 
gelling up inside the filter area, you can remove your cap, pour that in there, and it'll dissolve those crystals in there as well, and you get you back on the road again. So that's basically all of our diesel fuel additives right there, and uh, thank you, and I hope you have a great rest of the weekend. Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kemetic Gasket seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kemetic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kemetic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kemetic. Kemetic Gaskets sealing championships since 1989. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us. Nice, took a couple weeks off after the winter snowshoe and uh, took a little break and then was kind of eager to get back to it and uh, had some good uh, riding weeks of uh, pretty hard training this summer and then we done TKO and uh, we done the Red Bull event in Nashville and that's had some fun this summer so that was kind of the goal and uh, to be as ready as we could to come back the rest of the season and I think we're ready. Uh, I've always liked this place pretty well and uh, yesterday I rode it and I rode thankfully before the rain yesterday and uh, it's pretty gnarly. Uh, to, uh, I went out this morning a little bit and the tracks the tracks can be pretty brutal so it's probably going to tack up quite a bit now as so the sun's coming out and uh, it's going to dry up a little bit but there's some deep ruts and some slick hills and a lot of rocks so you know, hopefully uh, we just put it on the podium this weekend and that's, what, that's our goal throughout the rest of the year and uh, try, to, try to get this championship. Uh, yeah, I've had it a few weeks. So yeah, we uh, a few weeks ago they our mechanic brought me the bike and I had them on it. And I was like, sweet. So yeah, yeah, we've been practicing with it a little bit and uh, yeah, we might as well run it. So we burned it. Man, kind of a soft, medium kind of day. Like it's pretty rocky and uh, a lot of roots. So we we definitely want to be able to get traction on the off cambers. And you know, there's a the section they're not running in the morning. It's going to be pretty gnarly this afternoon. Well, really cool here from our points leader, Jordan Ashburn, uh, on his thoughts coming into today. And uh, speaking of reverse plates, points leaders, uh, or, well, all right, not points leader, I guess, former champ, I should say, Johnny Gerard. Uh, I believe Griff is standing by uh, down in the pits with his mechanic uh, to powwow with him. Let's see what he's got. Down here in the Coastal Gas Gas Factory Racing Pits with Doug Whitmer. He's Johnny Gerard's mechanic. Doug, how is it to have the number one back underneath the tent and out here racing two races back from injury? Oh, it's always good. Uh, Johnny's a competitor. He's got the fire in his eyes. And, you know, the goal is to win XE2, but he might have a little higher goal. Um, so we're in a good position today. I think we're 15 seconds right now out of the lead overall, leading XE1, but we're 15 seconds off of Ricky. So um, right now it's good for Coastal Gas Gas and, you know, just try to keep Johnny pumped up and keep him tamed down a little bit. But uh, we're, we're in a good position. Was it a surprise to see him running and leading the overall there in lap number one? Not to me. So what's the, what's the prediction for the rest of today? Uh, I think him and Ricky are going to be close. I think they're going to match now that Ricky knows Johnny was ahead of him overall, which is uh, that's good. I'm, I'm not picking sides because we're all under the same tent, but as my rider, he's going to know where Ricky's at, and Ricky's mechanic's going to let him know where Johnny's at. Well, thank you very much. From down here in the Coastal Gas Gas Factory Racing Tent, uh, Doug Whitmer, Johnny Girard's mechanic. Guys? And you want to talk about a guy that's been there, done that. Absolutely. Like, uh, Doug Whitmer has won championships with many races with Barry Hawk and uh, has been around the block. So. He knows a thing or two about what his rider needs to know. What a, a good problem to have. Yeah. Well, Johnny Gerard and Ricky Russell, both under this tent, you know. I and mean, we've seen it before with Ryder yeah, Lafferty absolutely. and Ricky Russell yep. earlier this year, both uh, grabbing wins, and uh, that team's just really flowing and, and really gelling right now. Good problem to have for the Coastal Racing Gas Gas team.
Got to yeah. love that. And, and you mentioned Whitmer. Whitmer's one of those guys that can process information. Whether Absolutely. it's the bike from the rider, uh, he can look at things. He can look at timing and scoring. But the guy knows every aspect. And you talked about him being with Barry so many years, mm -hmm. uh, doing such a fantastic job. A vet, so too. Am I correct on that? What's that? A veteran? Is, is that correct? Oh, yeah. That's what I thought. He was okay, out there yeah. This morning. yeah he so that's there why this he's morning. cool, calm, collected, man. Dude, absolutely. And, and like I said, that's his ability to process information yeah. as a part of his experience. Well, and we talk about Doug's experience, obviously, as a mechanic for Barry for many years. Uh, important to note that he has some racing experience of his own yes. as a uh, former XC1, then yes. what was called AA ATV racer. Uh, had a single digit number for a number of years. I uh, don't believe he ever got a win, but I know he had some top fives and, and maybe even some podiums during those years. So a rider that knows the mentality that it takes, knows how these courses develop, and uh, is, is a great asset to uh, whatever rider he is working with. And before it was on top of the list, one of the guys that was concerned with fitness, before it was as popular yeah. as it is now, Whitmer, the, the nastier the conditions, the hotter it got, the better his chances. I hope for sure. With you definitely. I think that's a hereditary thing with the Whitmer family <laughs> as well, too, guy. for sure. <laughs> oh, here comes your leader, Ricky Russell, the 212. We'll see what the gap is. We'll, uh, we like to get the shot here kind of as they hit the creek. So 129.20 as he drops the front wheel into the creek. We're not going to need much of a stopwatch wow. because there is Jordan Ashburn. The gap is seven seconds. So he is within eyesight of Ricky Russell. So at 29.27 was Ashburn. Can Stu Baylor close down the gap? He has. This is much closer than he was four miles ago when we saw him at the four mile marker. So 27 looking like it's going to be about 18 seconds is what the gap is. And look at this. Thad Duvall coming with him, folks. West Virginia's own. Get on your feet. Your boy Thad Duvall <laughs> back in action and back in contention for a podium. Maybe even a win today. The 989 Express is on rails and headed to the front, folks. I'd say Thad is having fun you know i always look at that differently uh, johnny knows uh when, when dad was on 85s him and lane michael uh they were part of a program i was involved in and you know watching those guys you know grow and learn and everything and of course dad being a, a west virginia boy and all that uh you know just one more element to today's return to racing <laughs> just one more piece of the excitement and, and who else to be involved other than that Duvall? you know oh, how, yeah. how fitting is that now i do have to say one thing about this section uh johnny i noticed First three guys, three different lines entering this rock section. So no follow leader whatsoever. We've seen basically every line used, but our top three guys, three distinctly different uh, lines. Yeah, when you enter that section, you got to kind of pick which way you're going to carry momentum. We did see Josh Toth go by there in the fifth place spot. Then it was uh, Ricky, I'm sorry, Johnny Girard uh, leading that XC2 class. He has lost some time, though, in that overall. He is going to be uh, a good bit more than... 15 seconds out of that overall and corrected time at the completion of this lap, or at least as they run here at the eight mile marker. And in his shadow, still just a few bike lengths behind him, the 198 Aleem Draper. Now we see the 342 of Craig DeLong. Uh, he's worked his way back up a little bit closer to that group in front of him. He has gotten around the 523 of Lane Michael, uh, who he was getting really close to when we saw him last there a few miles ago. He has made the pass and uh, made put, put a little bit of ground on Lane as well be interesting to see how Ashburn plays it out with being as close as he is to Ricky Russell. Does he want to risk it? Get up there in first place. He's also got that freight train, that 514 Ampro Yamaha behind him and Stu Baylor. And you know Stu's going to push the issue. Stu doesn't care if he's going for a championship or he's just going to win a race in West Virginia to party. He is going to let it all hang out. I, I, I think if you're Jordan Ashburn, you know, again, we talked about how consistent he is, how, how smart he is as a racer. He has great at race IQ. Jordan is smart enough to know if, if he's running this pace and he feels completely in control. Obviously, at any time when you're racing, anything can happen. But as a racer, you kind of get that sense of when you're on the ragged edge, if it's multiple times per lap or even multiple times per mile that you find yourself having to make these drastic corrections mm -hmm. and kind of oh, oh dang moments, you know, <laughs> where you're, <clears throat> you know, kind of puckered up and, you know, shoulder checking trees and, yeah. and barely saving yourself. You know, at that point, you're like, all right, we need to kind of reassess how things are going here. Um, if you've got a championship on the line like like Jordan does. But, you know, he may very possibly just be cruising and, and feeling it right now. And uh, if that's the case, if Stu Baylor starts to put some pressure on him, you know, he might fight back. He might drop in behind Stu and just kind of try to follow Stu's pace. That might, you know, bring them up even closer to Ricky, although I don't know how much closer he could get right now. You know, we always talk about the weight of that uh, reverse plate of being the points leader, the weight. Uh, I think uh, back, I believe it was, was it last season with uh, Grant Baylor? 
uh, early on in the year, and Grant talked about, man, when I finally didn't didn't have that, I felt like this weight was lifted off my shoulders. I feel like for Jordan Ashburn, this late in the season, I don't think he feels the pressure of that. Do you, Johnny? Do you no, I don't. I, I actually don't think he feels that pressure this late in the season, but I will say I was a little surprised to see him run the reverse plate. No kidding. Uh, because very few guys have ever run that with any success whatsoever. There's kind of True. a, there's a... Um, Walker does it. Walker Fowler, no, ATV Walker side. will not run it. Won't uh, run Chris it. Borich, uh, despite his six consecutive championships, yeah. he ran it one time, DNF'd, yep. and said, I'll never run that again. Yeah. Walker Fowler ran it twice. I think DNF'd one and didn't win the other by a good margin and said, well, we're never going to do that again. Yeah. Um, is it superstition? Of course. Is anything Absolutely. about that yeah. number plate going to change Jordan's chances to win today or win this championship? Of course not. But riders are superstitious. Yes. So, you know, Bryson Neal yesterday ran the reverse plate. Obviously, his second worst finish of yeah. uh, 2022, giving up a massive amount of points to Walker in the process. So it's, it's one of those things. It's like, you know, you know, uh, maybe we just kind of let sleeping dogs lie. <laughs> we don't. But Jordan right now, obviously, in, in a great position to win this race. You know, he might be the one that, that uh, Jordan's a pretty level-headed guy. I have a feeling if you asked him, he would probably just uh, poo-poo that and say, yeah. I, I don't believe in superstitions. Yeah. I, can I, see I that have 100%. this plate because I've earned it, and, and I'm going to run it because I want to. And, yes. and I respect that. I will say this. It looks pimp. I will <laughs> Absolutely, tell you that, man. man. Uh, you know what? Style game. 110 points. I, I think, I think we're showing our age here, man. Well, we can't say it looks <laughs> him. I, I think we have to say that it, it slaps. I think that, that slaps. slaps. Really? Pretty, I think that's, no cap. that's right. Yeah. No cap no is cap. another one. Um, yeah. What's slaps. the other? No, no cap slaps. means no Please line, right? No, like no line. You did say it, slaps. Yeah, slaps. Yeah. Like if something hits hard or it's like really cool, it slaps. Or this and is a cop. Friend, that now, means now, you got to have it. my daughter, Mikey. Now, I, I have no idea that term. Johnny yeah. just busted one out. If it broke, get on the TikTok. my kids as hip as they come. Is that still a term? My kids as hip? No, hip is way old. I think hip is old. I'm just out of it. I get caught up on the Ricky Russell on screen coming to the finish line. We'll come back. Ricky Russell is not whack. We'll come. No, we'll come. That one doesn't work either. No, nope. ah, megawatt. Just, me. Yep. Nope. Not gonna work. <laughs> um, that was like me earlier this year. What was I trying to make work? There was something I was a, fetch. A were you trying to make fetch work. No, now? there was a nickname I was trying to make work, and it, oh, I think I it was Jordan remember. Ashburn. Um, oh, speaking of Jordan Ashburn, right there, there still very close behind. How far back is Stu Baylor? Uh, looks like that is that. Duval, maybe. <laughs> think so. Looks like him. I will remember Slicky today. Though. Oh, Thad has actually Slicky. lost some ground to uh, Stu Baylor. Stu has now gotten away from Thad. It looks like he's put about 12 to 15 seconds on him as we refresh our here live timing and scoring. Why don't you guys call this pit stop here for Ricky Russell? Ricky Russell getting a pair of freshies, getting a little rehydration, as is his bike at that IMS quick fill. Getting him fueled up. Business as usual in the Coastal Racing Gas Gas Pits. Nothing out of the ordinary. And looks like Jordan Ashburn getting some of the same. There is wife, Mary. Jordan Ashburn knows about being a dad. He got to do it twice right away <laughs> with the twins. So, yeah, nothing too out of the ordinary out of our pit stops right there, which is kind of what we expected. Yeah, pretty standard, Mikey. Uh, yeah, nothing, no, no nothing crazy. right there. No, no, no juggling the goggles, no spilled gas. Uh, you know, that, that stuff is very unusual. But two good clean stops right there. All right, so here's the tail of the tape on the lap times and the gaps at the completion of lap number three. Ricky Russell coming in, still leading the way with a 33-12 lap time. But behind him, Jordan Ashburn closing up that gap with a 32-52, now only nine seconds behind. Behind him, Stu Baylor with a 32-38, putting in the fastest lap of the, of the, the group on that lap, now only 13 seconds behind Ashburn. That Duvall with a 32-44, so the second fastest lap after he latched on to uh, Baylor there and sitting in that fourth place up from, he was seventh at the completion of lap number two, now up to fourth and only 14 seconds behind Baylor. Here we see, uh, this is one of our uh, B-class riders coming in as a part of that gas gas team. Uh, but now checking in fifth place, Johnny Gerrard is your XC2 class leader. In second place, Liam Draper, only 15 seconds behind him. Those guys with the 33-35 and 33-47 lap time. So they have fallen way off the pace of the leaders at this point and are kind of starting to fall out of conversation for that overall podium with those lap times, at least on that lap. Now, could that just be a one-lap thing? Could they come back charging next lap and, and right back up in there for the win? Absolutely. But right now, those guys have just given up uh, looking at a lap's time 
135.04 for Ricky Russell is your leader, and Johnny Girard, 135.50. So 46 seconds out of the lead now for Ricky Russell. Last lap, it was 15. Or for uh, Johnny Girard, last lap, it was 15. So he gave up over 30 seconds wow. to Ricky Russell on that lap. And Girard's pit stop looked a little lackadaisical right there. There was no sense of urgency, yeah. uh, no big hurry. As a matter of fact, seemed like he took a little extra second, took a deep breath there, and then uh, back at it. These are some lap riders working their way through the Monster Mile at the one mile marker. Now we see the 212 of Ricky Russell in the background there, working his way up through. We'll see if he can get through with a little bit more uh, forward momentum this time. We do see the feet off the peg, but he picks a more direct line, not quite as much serpentine alligator chasing going on. <laughs> uh, but is that, no, oh, Jordan Ashburn has dropped some ground because it was only seven seconds when we saw them in the nine at the finish line. It is more than that now. And here he comes working his way up through. Oh, you see the long legs of oh, Ashburn. Oh boy. And now he's got knock, some knock. pressure behind from Stu Baylor. Stu Baylor gonna put uh, all of that Baylor on the back of that <laughs> dirt bike, wow. get some traction. And he is now putting some serious pressure on Jordan Ashburn for that number two spot. You know, Good. Ashburn took just a little longer in the pits as well. If you notice, you, uh, we're talking about his pit stop, Mikey. A few more seconds for him. Gave up a little bit of time. And there all of a sudden, Stu Baylor breathing down his neck. Thad Bad looking about the looking, best through yeah, there. Wow. Looking solid, looking strong, and looking like he is focused forward and trying to continue to tag a ride with Stu Baylor, who appears to be at this time headed for the front. It's Stu. crazy. Those guys lined up together on 85 on Superman. <laughs> yes. Uh, it, it was the Baylor boys, Lane Michael, and uh, Thad Duvall, you know, in, in the day. And watch these guys come through the 250s, the whole ranks. And uh, watching them at the top of their game right now uh, at this point in their career, just absolutely incredible. Next, we should be waiting and watching for a combination of, uh, should be Johnny Girard, Liam Draper, Josh Toth, Craig DeLong, Lyndon Snodgrass, Grant Baylor. So there is Toth right there. Uh, looks like he has made the pass back again on Johnny Girard. Uh, so we'll be waiting and watching for the number one gas gas. And here he comes of Johnny Girard. You can see those mud flaps on top of his hand guards for a little bit of extra protection. Solidly in the lead still in that XC1, XC2 class. Uh, looking like he has opened up just a little bit of a gap now over Liam Draper, who I believe is this rider right here. Draper still in touch, but now is not exactly in sight with Girard. And that makes it harder to chase him. Draper, a little bobble right there, able to recover, keep it on two wheels through that tough section. Oh, Craig DeLong fighting oh, back. Yep. He's worked his way back up and gotten closer, but now you can see him just, he's really pushing the pace and that's where you get those mistakes. But if you want to make up the time, you got to risk it for the biscuit. We're getting updates right now that Ricky uh, Russell. See, I think he did. Ricky I Russell may gas. not have gotten fuel in that pit stop. They're thinking that the cap did not come off, but I can't believe he would have left without fuel. Uh, they're going through the live replay right now. Could just been a glitch in the way our camera was looking at it. Uh, we're getting updates from our producer. Uh, we'll let you know if, if that is the case, but I, I feel Ricky, they would have kept him in the pits as long as yeah. they need to to make oh, sure yeah. they get fuel in that thing, even if they had to remove the tank and swap it with another yeah, one. absolutely. <laughs> and I, I believe I saw Whitmer hit that thing twice. Okay, we see some more lap riders working their way through now at the Monster Mile. Well, producer's saying no fuel. Maybe we'll get a replay on that. And take it. Here we go. Specialized rapid replay as you get the fuel cap off. I'm watching the fuel tank. Ooh. Oh, and that was not Doug. I thought that was Doug there. Oh, no. They did not get any fuel in that machine. Nope. No right. fuel as went as in. Look a great so busy right. looking yeah. at the rider. Producers. Folks, we have yes. a shakeup here. Ricky Russell receiving no fuel in his fuel stop. A, a mistake, quite frankly, from the fuel man. Oh. Uh, he had it, it. The way those dry brake receivers work, you have to get it locked in, pushed down, and you'll see the bubbles come up, it, it, signifying the fuel is going in. That fuel level never moved. Ricky Russell received no fuel. I'm certain that the crew is aware of that, and they're going to have to stop him next lap if he can make it that far. There you go, if he can hey, make it that far. Good eyes by Griffin Carter, because we all watched that. We watched it go yeah. into the tank, we watched it removed, and there wasn't a sense of urgency from the team like something went yeah. wrong. 
Okay, you didn't <laughs> see any panic uh, by any means. So great catch by Grim Cotter down there. So just to clarify, rules on that. Pro rider, I believe so, if they so run gonna, out of fuel, We're going to have to be very careful what we say here because yeah. I – so here's the, here's the rule as it reads. Um, you can receive fuel out on the course if you run out of fuel Only enough, enough to get you back to your pit. And even if you don't need fuel, you must stop the next time through the pits. Where the gray area, um, I won't call it a gray area, but where the question is, that's not Ricky Russell being pushed by the crew. Uh, just, just so you know, <laughs> that is uh, another one of their riders there. Um, where the question comes in is what what signifies running out of fuel because a lot of times the bike will shut off will refire um so uh, yes is the, is the answer <laughs> um, can they like can they just right go there. out and give him enough fuel to get him back to the pits they will confer with the rules officials i'm sure to determine whether or not they can do that to get him back to the pits or if they have to physically monitor him around the track until he runs out of fuel and at that point give him fuel. That decision will be made by the rules officials and also by Ricky's crew. And uh, unfortunately, I, I don't believe he will have enough fuel to compete four it, laps of it, racing. It, that would be over two hours of racing. Yes. And those are two very different situations you're talking about, where he runs out or preventative maintenance. Good and point. How much is allowed to get back to the pits? How much can you put in? How you can put as much in as, as... But he still has to make the stop. He, correct. When he he comes can, back in. They can put a full tank of those tanks there we hold go. about 2.8 gallons, I believe, on that particular 2.7, 2.8 gallons. He just can't gallons. blow through the he pits. Can, he can put... They can put a full 2.8 gallons in there, but he has to come in and stop and top off when he comes through the okay. pits if they do that. Uh, the issue is going to be, we talked about earlier with the course layout, this is not a course that Cloverleaf's back on itself. So once he gets out to that farthest point, they won't be able to, they're not allowed to use pit vehicles. So right. they're not going to be able to get to him with fuel if he does run out at that farthest point. Their best bet is going to be to try to calculate when they best think he is going to run out of fuel, which I am confident he will this lap. There is no chance that that machine is going to go a complete another lap without fueling. I, I, you can't say no chance, but there is a slim to no yeah. chance that he would be able to make four laps over two hours of racing without fueling at the pace that they're going, meaning that at some point he's going to need to get fuel to complete lap number four. They're going to need to pick a spot out on the course where they feel he can make it to and be ready for him there with fuel, giving him enough to get back to the pits where he can top off again and be back on pit schedule. They're going to need a lot of luck to come their way for Ricky to continue leading this race. So if you're Ricky Russell, do you nurse that thing Ricky back around Russell this has lap, or do you say no just go idea. send it? I don't think he's got a clue. He has no idea Because he's so focused on what he's doing. You he's like us. He wasn't watching that fuel You rely tank. on your pit crew to, yeah. to, to be the ones that make sure the fuel gets in there. Obviously, some extenuating circumstances for Ricky sure. this weekend. Yeah. With, um, you know, his mechanic and, and his fuel man not being there. I'm sure the gentleman that was doing it did his best. It was a mistake. It happens. It may come out in the wash. It may, it may yeah. not affect the yeah, outcome yeah, yeah. at all. But right now, it is a major point of stress for that Coastal Racing for sure. Gas Gas team. Barry Hawk runs that team. He knows the rules. He knows. I'm sure they have a plan right now that they're uh, that, that they're working on to, to figure out how to get Ricky fuel to get him to complete this lap so he can top off when he gets back it's to the pits. Probably a good time to let our good buddy DK know that, hey, remember your breath. Breathe. Breathe, buddy. Breathe. You're going to be okay. And just got word, I think it's going to be a five-lap race is what they said on the comms there. So going to have a five-lap race, three laps into it, hour 45 minutes into it. Starting to develop. <laughs> hey. Absolutely, Mikey. Getting real right now, buddy. And that was the biggest clip that we saw come through that section just a moment ago. Probably about 18 to 20 bikes. So something else we're going to have to start thinking about. I think we might have Griff. Sounds like Griff. With an somebody. update. Hey guys, we're down here in the uh, Babbitt's Kawasaki pits with uh, Doug Duchette. Another kind of anomaly in our top 10 is if you look at 10th place overall right now, it's Grant Davis out of the 250A class. And Doug has worked with uh, Grant for some time now. How's Grant doing out there on the track? Uh, phenomenal. He's actually, uh, you know, we, when, this morning he just looked like he had an eye of the tiger, uh, so to speak. So, uh, you know, when the gate from the gate drop, when he got the whole shot to now, he's just really on fire. So very impressed with his results so far. So let's see if we can just keep it going throughout the end of the day. You've been there at the practice track with him. Are you surprised by anything you're seeing today? I am not. Uh, you know, Grant is just one of those. He just has a natural talent, just like his brother Nick. Just phenomenal rider, and that talent is definitely showing throughout today. And he was definitely a man on a mission. He said he was going to do it, and he's doing exactly what he said he was going to do. 
three laps into this one, and Grant Davis is still in the top 10 overall out of that 258 class. We'll have to keep an eye on that and see if he can uh, stay there in the top 10. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, I'm going to say right now it's been a long time since we've seen an A rider anywhere near the top 10 overall, unless it was a crazy, crazy mud race or a race where just so many riders were out with bike issues or something like that. Maybe Iron Man last year. <laughs> well, sure, yeah. Maybe. Any, I mean, yeah, that's, again, but in, under normal, like, racing sure. circumstances, Josh Toth coming by there at the four-mile marker. Um, yeah, that's a phenomenal ride for him with the level of talent that there is out there in that XC1 and XC2 and even XC3 classes. You know, it's a... Uh, it's a stretch to see a riders get into the top 20 uh, anymore, let alone a top 10. I mean, this is going back to, you know, the days of when Grant Baylor and Lane Michael were kind of battling in that 258 class. You know, you're going back way, way, way back at that point. Um, you know, and, and it's happened obviously previous to that, but I don't believe it's happened since those guys. Um, again, maybe on a case-by-case -case basis, it could have happened in a mud race or something. I'm not taking away credit from anyone who may have done it. Oh, look at this. We've got a bottleneck at the FMF PowerPoint. This could throw a monkey wrench into things. We've got some lapped riders pointing the wrong direction down the uh, down at the 10-mile marker. We saw this on the last lap uh, yesterday with Walker Fowler coming in. Actually, he had to take the long way around the FMF PowerPoint. Luckily, at a big old gap, so it really wasn't a concern for him. But that could play into uh, our battle for the lead. Liam Draper with his goggles on backwards, an interesting look. To me, that signifies that somewhere along the way, he had to have stopped because you can't just spin those things right. around backwards while you're riding. Wonder if there was a bottleneck or he got stuck and chose to take those things off and spin them around backwards to, uh, you know, get himself some fresh air. Temperatures are starting to rise out there. <laughs> they are. That's a bit what I was alluding to when I talked about those 18 or 20 bikes that came through a moment ago. Somebody's going to go down, then it's dominoes. Okay, mm -hmm. that bike was sideways across the track. Now you got a log jam all of a sudden. Where, where is uh, Ricky Russell? Where is Johnny Girard? Where is Liam Draper? You know, are they going to be affected by that? And the deeper we get into this race, you're going to see some more of those packs, I'm going to believe. Yeah, no doubt. Certainly going to happen as we progress along now, hour 50 minutes into it. And sitting here at the uh, Method Alley, Method Race Wheels, Method Alley, mile marker number four, missing visors. <laughs> Right over there, Miss Advisor. I heard you this morning <laughs> with yeah. Jeff Hines talking about. I don't know if it's a new fashion trend or if it's track I, conditions or what. I don't know if everybody just landed on their head today I or mean, what, Mikey. Tough. But I, a dozen guys came through without visors. I, <laughs> no, I, I blame I some. Of, I blame some of these helmet manufacturers that think these magnetic visors uh, are a I good idea. It. You know, I, I mean, it. I understand they they think that it's safety, um, and and uh, you know, I'm sure there's some science behind it. But I got to tell you. You know, you look at what Jet Lawrence finishes probably 75% of his races without a visor, you know, bullet head style. You know, these, these companies need to stop with this. Figure out how to Listen. make it work better or, it, it, you know, or, or do away with it. You're 100% right. When that thing breaks off, now all of a sudden we're exposed to the sun, the roost, the whole deal. But what they're worried about is it not breaking in half. Listen, I'd yeah. rather have half a visor than no visor at that point. Uh, the chance of it coming back through the eye port, that type of thing. Listen, if it snaps off and goes through the eye port, it's just the same as breaking away. No doubt. The eye port. <sighs> Things heating up here in West Virginia. Don't forget breakaway visors. <laughs> they stink. We know where they stand and on they that. they look stupid when they come off. <laughs> we'll be back with more of the uh, visor talk here on Racer TV after this. We all have our reasons to accomplish, to work hard. We share a common goal, to be the best. Keep fighting, put in the work, never take the easy way. Your drive and determination fuels our passion.
This Week in Yamaha History takes us back to September 24, 2005. It was the inaugural running of the Unadilla GNCC. And on a bright and sunny fall day in upstate New York, the then eight-time GNCC champion Bill Balance took to the early lead. The dry virgin course presented many challenges with rocks, roots, and the general terrain of the Unadilla Valley River for era greats like Bill Balance and his brother Brandon Balance, Santo Derisi, Andy Lagsons, Chris Jinks, William Yokely, Chad Duvall, and many, many more. As Balance had the lead early, he would run into some troubles, dropping to third place and then eventually to seventh place at the midway point of the race before driving all the way back to battle with the leaders at the end. In the meantime, North Carolina's Brian Cook and Missouri's Brian Baker battled with West Virginia's Chris Jinks for the lead. Jinks found some problems at the midway point himself, and he dropped back all the way to 11th. With two laps to go, Brian Cook took to the lead, holding on to the top spot down to the wire to finish one minute and three seconds over Bill Balance and Brian Baker. And that's this week in Yamaha history. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us. Ben Kelly here, 2021 GNCC champion. Subscribe to Racer X and get yourself a fresh FMF t-shirt. of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kemetic Gasket seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kemetic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kemetic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kemetic. Kemetic Gaskets sealing championships since 1989. Honor, dignity, service to others, and respect. During unprecedented times, first responders across the nation are working hard to keep us and our families safe. This week, we take time to pay homage to these selfless individuals across the nation, the ones putting their lives on the line every day for our freedom. First responders, the GNCC Racing Nation owes you it all. From the bottom of our heart, thank you. This Racer TV broadcast is brought to you by Specialized. Specialized Turbo E-Bikes. It's you, only faster. And by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. Hey guys, I'm Thad Duvall and you're watching GNCC Live on Racer TV. Yeah, you know, here we are round 10, um, making the comeback after the big injury at round one. And um, yeah, just been um, really grinding all summer long. Been down at Caleb's um, training place and uh, just been riding with the guys and trying to get back into shape. And, um, yeah, feeling really good on the bike. Um, just uh, got to eliminate the mistakes. 
get that racing back. And uh, yeah, you know, it's been, I think, seven months since I raced. So um, looking forward to it. Conditions are <laughs> pretty good this weekend. It rained all day yesterday, but uh, should be really slick. And um, yeah, just uh, just super excited to be here and be racing and be being healthy. And, um, after the injury, it was pretty devastating, um, but just uh, try to keep my head high, and here we are. We're back at round 10 and ready to race these last four. Good to hear from Thad. Good to see Thad out there. Good to see him having fun, I think, is the most important thing. Those were the big takeaways I had from talking to him. Just There was a, there was a, guy, there was a guy a couple years ago that uh, suddenly started having fun and he started like winning races and being yeah. on the podium all the time. I think his name was Josh Strang. Yes. So it worked well for him at that stage in his career. And uh, maybe Thad Duvall can kind of, you know, channel his inner Josh Strang today and just keep having fun. Obviously, when it comes down to the last lap, you know, these guys are landed all in line. Heart rates are 190 plus, and um, you know, the conditions, the way they are, they're hanging it out. It's not going to be a lot of fun. But when you cross the finish line, it sure is fun if you're on the podium, or even if you're Thad. I mean, in that position, for Thad to be in the top five today, he's got to look at that as, as a great day, but I'm sure a podium would feel a little better for him. Waiting on our leaders. Okay, I didn't work it. I was worried I wasn't, wasn't on. <laughs> Scared me to death. Waiting on our leaders, mile marker number eight. And uh, been a good one so far. Uh, what, two to go? Is that what two you said? Yeah, in. yeah, two hours in, two hours in. Uh, fog will be a five-lap race yep. when it's all said and done. And I don't think they got the two-lap card, so we'll go straight to the white flag uh, when they come through with that, uh, what will be fourth lap completed. So here we are, folks. We're waiting at the eight-mile marker, and the elephant in the room, will we see Ricky Russell emerge? Will he still be moving yes. with fuel in his tank? Has he already gotten fuel? Has he run out of fuel? This, to me, is the, is the storyline right now. I'm so glad he wasn't referring to me as the <laughs> elephant in the room uh, with that, his uh, gut right now, Johnny. So uh, thanks. I'm in here, so I, you're you know, safe, Mega. I was like, way to welcome me back, Johnny. Yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> the in the room, I, if I'm looking for the elephant in the room, I just look in the mirror, buddy. <laughs> oh, Lord oh, help. Okay, here we go. All right, so here we wait, we watch, and we may have not an answer because that is not <laughs> nope. Ricky Russell, nor is it any of the other top XC1 riders. Um, we'll be waiting and watching. We know it's Ricky Russell was leading. Uh, we do know he had an issue with his fuel jug there, not getting into the dry brake receiver system, meaning he transferred zero fuel or what appeared to be zero fuel, near zero fuel, from that IMS dump can into his tank on his Coastal Racing Gas Gas 350. Um, really bringing into question how much fuel could he possibly have left after now two hours and one minute of racing. Uh, it is seemingly inconceivable that he could carry enough fuel to go that long, uh, meaning that we're thinking he's either having to have gotten fuel along the way on this lap number four, or he may have altogether run out. By the time we see him here at the eight, his crew will be searching, trying to find him or find a spot where they can give him fuel. Again, keeping in mind, no matter what happens, he will have to stop in the VP Fuels, or I'm sorry, in the GBC Pit Stop area and uh, get... Uh, Johnny. <laughs> I know. Johnny. You would think I would get that one you right. Are the the Come on. Guy. It was the VP Fuels Pro Row for a it long, was. long time. I've made that mistake several times. So, so he will need to stop there unless he actually does make this complete lap without stopping for fuel. And then we know he, they're definitely going to... They'll have like a, a spike strip and a yeah. blockade <laughs> and everything else making sure that he stops knowing that he needs fuel. Um, I'm sure he'll be a little confused by the situation, whether it be him running out of fuel, them catching him along the way, or them stopping him in the pits. However, it transpires in his mind he just got fuel yep. um but what he got was a load of sailboat fuel which is air because <laughs> he got nothing he got nothing i don't think he got air in there it's just nothing nope and here we have a new leader the 514 is Stu baylor on the ampro yamaha out front looking like he's got no immediate pressure from behind two hours two minutes 40 seconds as he crosses the creek there we'll wait and we will watch it appears that is thad do fall. No, Jordan Ashburn in the number two spot on the number three Magnum One Motorsports. 13, 14 seconds back on that Husqvarna. So still within striking distance. And it is Thad Duvall in third. So folks, I think it is safe to say that Ricky Russell, disaster has struck, either running him out of fuel or he had to stop for fuel and lost a lot of time. But judging by this amount of time, uh, it is the, the worst of the two. Is this Ricky here? is so the disaster not as bad as it could have been don't know if he ran out and was able to get fuel quickly or if 
just the simple stopping through off his threw off his uh, his rhythm enough that he lost the lead, but sounds like we may have a update on uh, that situation from the pits with Griff Cotter. Yeah, guys, I just wanted to confirm. I spoke to the uh, Coastal Gas Gas pits, and there was a, a mix-up at the last pit stop. We, I, I wanted to hear it from them rather than just assume off of the replay, and there was a little mix-up, uh, and it does sound like uh, Ricky's having some trouble out there. Maybe he could be choking it back a little bit uh, just to, to ride it in so he can get some fuel next time around here in VPP Fuels Pro Row, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. Guys? So we'll take a look at the replay again here. So mix-up, I don't know what the mix-up was, but there was a mix-up apparently. They're saying that maybe he could have enough to just nurse it in to, to get fuel the next lap, but he didn't take. Not an ounce. It, it, That's, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I I, I believe he, for him to have made it as far as he had, he, he would pretty well have to have gotten fuel or else, I mean, it's possible if, if you ride with you know, just the right throttle control, you can really conserve fuel. If so, Ricky Russell deserves an award for going two hours and four minutes with oh, still no about doubt. another four or five minutes to go to the finish. I mean, we're going to be pushing two hours and probably eight minutes, 208, 208 210 by the time they make it to VP or to the GPC pit stop area uh, for him to get fuel. Um, if he made it that far in one tank of fuel, that is officially the furthest that any XC1 rider has ever made it on a tank of fuel. So kudos <laughs> to him. We're waiting and watching. Looks like Stu Baylor coming along the bottom there. Should be coming across the screen and straight up the FMF PowerPoint. There he is, the 514 Ampro Yamaha leading the way. Now, we mentioned struggling early in the race, not appearing to have his usual Stu Baylor flow, but he has found it, put it together, and is starting to march away from the field here. Second place as they come by. The number three, your points leader, Jordan Ashburn, solidly in control of this championship and still within striking distance for a win here today. There we see Thad Duvall's dad chad uh pointing a line for what we now know is thad coming around in that third place spot followed by the number 212 of ricky russell in fourth so here comes there is ashburn there in second Stu just went by this is a little further up that fmf powerpoint and as we look back here comes the 989 of thad duvall west virginia zone get on your feet there at the finish line coming by for a white flag waving thad duvall in a podium position yeah, he looked like he's on the gas right there. Yeah. On the peg, had plenty left, centered up over the bike. Getting a good drive through there. Looked like Ricky Russell up launching his bike oh, no. over the top of the FMF power point. Wasn't able to make it, but he had the wherewithal to kind of send his bike over the top. He is uh, hopping back on there and on his way, giving up some valuable time, though. He has now fallen well off the pace of the top three there. Probably upwards of 25, 30 seconds back of Duvall, uh, who is in third place and... and more like 45 seconds or more back from Baylor who's leading so Ricky things have really come undone for him here in this lap uh, possibly being kind of getting started with that jumbled pit stop don't know what of that information and I got to tell you guys that takes a lot of energy out of you what he just had to do there throwing your bike on oh, the yeah. top clawing yourself on your hands and knees up a very steep hill granted he had a lot of help from spectators there they helped him get the bike over the top had it running for him it looked like it stayed running and he was able to hop on but man that just saps any available energy you have left especially two hours into a very very grueling race seconds feel like minutes in that situation so at the 10 mile marker fmf powerpoint top four through with baylor leading the way second place jordan ashburn third place thad duvall fourth place ricky russell next up should be a combination of josh toth johnny gerrar liam draper all those guys right there together uh and again inside the top 10 overall we'll keep an eye out for that 922 of grant davis our 250a class leader and top 10 overall phenomenal ride for him today we may not get a shot of him on screen but uh we got to keep an eye out for him in the uh live timing and scoring johnny gerrard up the fmf powerpoint leading that xc2 class no issues for him looking like he may have finally opened up a bit of a gap over the 198 of liam draper who when we last saw him had those goggles backwards on his helmet signifying maybe a little bit of pushing there is the 206 of josh toth also up the FMF PowerPoint, incredibly slick, but feet on the pegs the whole way. 
Yeah, Chose a couple off. different options there. The guy's really starting to uh, maybe hug to that inside a little more. Some of these guys Craig's drifting along. out to the outside there, but the short line, of course, is to the inside. It looks like it's ground up pretty good now, like there's good traction in there. Craig DeLong is on the charge. He's made up a lot of ground, and he is now up very close to the back of Josh Toth and starting to threaten for that position. We'll get our live timing and scoring to refresh. Stu Baylor looking good right now, folks. The last lap for Baylor was a 30... 228. We'll see what this lap is. Here comes Ashburn now checking in. We've got a little bit of a time delay today on our live timing and scoring. So a 33 flat for Baylor. So the pace has definitely slowed just a little bit. Look at this. Thad Duvall takes a look over and sees those guys in front of him, knowing that is the leader of the race. Now our second place rider, Ashburn, having checked in and also Duvall having checked in. We'll wait for our timing and scoring to refresh. And it is a 16 second gap for Baylor over Ashburn and only eight seconds back to Thad Duvall with the 33 flat for Baylor, 33-29 for Ashburn, and a 33-10 for Thad Duvall. Yeah, we talked about Thad picking the pace up, and that's exactly what he's done throughout the course of the race. And uh, getting stronger each lap, of course, Stuart Baylor really just putting in some great laps, finding some different traction, and able to really turn his day around. We talk about late in the race when he does his best work. Uh, when his talents really shine, and he's proven that here this afternoon. These last couple laps have been exceptional for him, and as Johnny pointed out, in one lap, picked up somewhere around 40 seconds, I believe, in one lap. All right, so let's keep an eye on this right here. We're waiting and watching for Ricky Russell. Should be coming by, hopefully, here in just a matter of a few seconds. They're going to go again with the fuel. They're going to get him topped off. Looks like they've got some fresh goggles and a drink for him in case he needs that as well. Uh, we're watching the end of the GBC Tires pit stop here. We should see the 212 of Ricky Russell. We know he did get stuck on that FMF power point, costing himself some valuable time. He is now back. He's going to have to put in a remarkable charge to get anywhere near getting back on the podium today unless some luck comes his way. But we're waiting and watching to see is he able to make it back to get that fuel he so badly needs to complete this final lap of racing. He just checked in. Like you said, there's a small delay, so we should be seeing. There he comes right now. Man, almost judging by body language, I don't know if Ricky Russell expected it. Yeah, he, he didn't. I don't think he, he knew. He's probably in his head, why am I here? Oh, this is why I'm here. Holy smokes, that thing's thirsty. Looks like Ricky may have had a crash. Look at his left yeah, arm yeah, there yep, by his body yep. language. Ricky has gone down, and he, at this point, he is just trying to salvage something out of today. Still in fourth place. That's a great ride for him. But you know he's going to be disappointed having led this so much of the race, basically from the start, having a solid gap there and looking like he was in position to, uh, to bring this thing home today. Johnny, what enters my mind, we see the torn jersey and that left shoulder hanging just a bit. Did that thing run out of gas? At the wrong moment, it cough and sputter on him and toss him down. Uh, it, 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 that's just speculation, of course, but uh, one scenario that, that could have come to fruition there today. Anything's possible. A lot of things happen out there on these 12-mile racetracks. There's Doug Whit Whitmer with the pit board for Johnny Gerard. Johnny now a uh, little bit of breathing room over Liam Draper. Uh, we didn't actually see Liam come through at the 10-mile marker. It was Josh Toth. Oh, Stu Baylor down in the Monster Mile. We know he's got about 16 seconds, but this is going to give up about... Uh, five or so so this is going to give Ashburn an opportunity to see him and there is Ashburn wow. looks up and he sees Baylor riding away so he knows he's got another shot at the big man from South Carolina and look at him he is <laughs> hungry he's oh, on yeah. the charge and he wants his second win how phenomenal would that be all these years for Jordan Ashburn to get a win to back it up with another yeah it might have been two months of lap time but in the racing world, it's the next day. That's right. And this guy right here, Thad Duvall, in that third place spot, final podium position. I got to tell you, coming through BP Fuse Pro Row, he to me looked to be the most composed, the most focused, but he's going to have to really get on the stick and do something here in these next couple miles because he's just a little too far back right now to threaten the two in front of him. As soon as Ashburn got that visual on Stu right there, oh. when I tell you he went to the fringe, there wasn't an inch right. track left. He went clear to that inside fringe looking for that smooth line, grabbed a handful, and definitely got aggressive immediately as soon as he saw Stu with his feet down. You guys, say, Johnny, you can speak to this more than, than me, but you see that guy in front of you, and it's like getting rehydrated. Oh. I mean, it's like taking a, a, a shot of uh, adrenaline as you see them, and you're able, wow, okay, there they are. Now I can get up there and key off of them. I just gained uh, my second win. 
I call it the mental draft. I mean, when you're trying you to go. run somebody down and, and you see that, you see on the pit board that, you know, they maybe have you by 30 seconds and then it's then it's 20 and then it's 16 and then suddenly you come into a section you see them still in that section kind of exiting it and the lap before you couldn't see them in that same section you know you can look at the pit board and know all day long that you're closed on somebody but when you can physically see yourself closing man it, it you no matter how tired you are no matter how rough the track is it just re-energizes you and you're like yep it, it's time to go ricky russell still there solidly in fourth uh he may be in danger of Johnny Girard getting him on corrected time uh, for that fourth place position in the overall itself, but fourth physically sitting pretty solidly in that position in the XC1 uh, as far as physically and, and in the overall as they run right now. Well, starting to see some riders struggle now, looking a little further back in the pack and some of our other classes, fatigue starting to set in, some arm pumps starting to set in. Now you're starting to get some exposed rock now. You're really starting to get uh, the surface worn off. And some of these sections here on this last lap are going to be a bit trickier. And here comes your XC2 leader in the back there, the 969, Jonathan Girard up on the pegs. No problems for him through the monster mile. And uh, we'll have to see if we can get a gap back to Liam Draper. Looks like... Draper now back to that ninth. Oh, sorry. Draper now back to third. Lyndon Snodgrass has moved up to second. Two minutes and 32 seconds behind Johnny Girard. So noting that uh, Draper had those goggles on backwards, something going on. Yeah. You know, he had, uh, don't know if it's fatigue, don't know if he had a crash. Something happened there. At that point, he was only just 15 seconds or so behind Girard. Now having dropped back 15 seconds behind Snodgrass, who is two minutes and 32 seconds behind Girard, so 245 back for Liam Draper. Still in a podium position. Here we see the 342 of Craig DeLong. Uh, he has, looks like he has made his way around Toth. No, he was six seconds behind Toth when they checked in at scoring, and no. Yes, he has made his way around Toth, because here comes Toth now. Oh, Toth struggling in the Monster Mile, uh, and just checking in with four laps complete. Sorry. Liam Draper, now it's saying one minute and 17 seconds. But, oh, he hadn't checked in with four laps complete yet. So he is one minute and 17 seconds behind. Uh, Cody Barnes now has checked in 30 seconds behind uh, Liam Draper in that fourth place position in that XC2 Pro Lights class. So Draper, if you can't get things together here on this last lap, is in jeopardy of losing a podium position after having run basically in formation wheel to wheel with Johnny Girard throughout the first three laps. Uh, something has come undone for Draper here on lap number two. Davis comes through as well, Grant Davis. Yeah. Uh, see if that puts him back into the top ten. It was in that tenth position last time around. Needs a good lap right here to maintain that. Sounds like Griff Cotter's ready for us with an update in the pits. Down here on VP Fuels Pro Row uh, in the Ampro Yamaha pits with Stu Baylor's mechanic, Lucas Statham. Lucas, take us through the today's race. Uh, Stu off to not the best start, but was able to claw his way back to the top. Yeah, you know, Stu uh, said even going into this race before the race, he said, you know, if he could hang back and forth and learn the track and see these lines, you know, and drop the hammer about halfway, that's what he was going to do. But if he, if, he could, if he could get out front early, he was going to. But wherever he settled in, he was said he was going to drop the hammer halfway, and it looks to be like that's exactly what he done. So, just the second race back from injury. Uh, what's Stu? What? What do you? What's your guys' goals headed uh, uh, towards the latter half of the season? You know, we want to win. Stu's here. Uh, he's, he wants to win. Um, and I think you know Stu can win, and I think he will win. Um, he's ready. He's had all summer break. You know, he went back to snowshoe and he finished on the podium. Um, and that was that was a surprise to some people, but you know Stu's tough. So a healthy Stu is a dangerous Stu. So uh, I think I think we're going to see him on the box for the rest of the year. Thank you, Lucas, from the Ampro Yamaha pits here down here in VP Fuels Pro Row. Stu Baylor leading the way in this one. We'll see how it shakes out. Megawatt, you mentioned as we went to uh, Griff there for that update that uh, we had an A rider that was still in the top ten. And uh, looks like he has checked in now. Yeah, Grant Davis just doing a phenomenal job today. We saw him get bumped out just for a moment. I said, you know what? The clock is ticking. It's going to be close. Davis able, able to uh, maintain that position there, still riding in the 10th position, less than half a lap to go. And only two seconds out of that ninth position behind Draper. So <coughs> obviously an off lap for Draper with a 38.02 lap time. Uh, he had previously been running laps with Johnny Girard, who was a 34.27. So yeah, three and a half minutes off the pace there on that lap alone 
was Liam Draper. So something has to be going on there with Liam. Uh, but Grant Davis with the 35.55, nice solid lap time. Not quite on the pace of the guys up in front of Draper, so don't see him getting much further, minus maybe a little bit of luck coming his way than possibly that ninth place. But still, I mean, a top 10 overall. Here is Draper on screen. Still, those goggles hanging backwards and looking like the wheels have really started to come off the bus now. Uh, but he's still fighting. He's still there in that third place spot. And we'll wait and we'll watch. 30 seconds back, it was to Cody Barnes. And there we see Barnes right there uh, working his way up through and looking like he has some another rider pressuring him from behind. It's hard to tell, but was that his teammate there? And that's Mike Wachowski. So we've now got a snarling pack of XC2 guys that are all kind of right in the uh, in the mix there for that final podium spot in that XC2 class was at Draper. Rui? Unless he can get things going, it may have been Rui and then Grant Baylor now coming his way through. If we check our results here, uh, just for the XC2 Pro 250 class. Um, it looks like, yeah, Cody Barnes was sitting in that fourth place spot, 30 seconds back, Rui Barbosa, one second behind him, Mike Wachowski, two seconds behind him. So again, it is Barnes, Barbosa, Wachowski that are all putting pressure on Draper now for that final podium position, but they are about a minute 15, minute 20 behind Lyndon Snodgrass. So he's looking like he's in a pretty comfortable position to hang on to second. And Johnny Girard in a race of his own out front, two minutes, 32 seconds ahead now after having battled most of the day. Uh, looks like we've got our leaders coming through here at the four mile marker. Yes, two up on the pegs, working his way right through there, carrying a good pace. And he has opened up a bit of a gap again over Jordan Ashburn. Nothing too huge, but uh, Ashburn needs to get to the rear wheel of Stu if he wants to have any chance to pass him or even to hang with his pace here as we close out the final eight miles of racing here at this Summit Bechtel GNCC. Johnny, you called it the mental toe, the mental draft yep. is what you called it. He's not quite in position to do that. He did see him right there. Uh, right now it's blood in the water stage. Yeah. And, uh, and, he uh, smells the blood in the water. But you like know, you said, to get that to get that mental draft uh, needs to pick up just a little bit of real estate, and then it's going to be a whole new game for the last half of this lap. Thad Duvall there coming by, still in solidly in that third place spot. He has a very very comfortable gap over Ricky Russell in fourth, and uh, then another comfortable gap behind Ricky there to fifth. So Thad looking like a shoe in for a podium today. If he can just keep it on two wheels and keep plugging away here in his home state of West Virginia, he's going to give the Mountaineer fans something to cheer for. Um, the one thing with that metal draft, it works both ways. When you're sure. closing on a guy oh, in front of you, absolutely. It, it can make you, it can make your day, it can give you a whole new breath of fresh air, can make you feel like a superhuman, but when you're giving it every ounce of effort, you feel like you're doing everything you can and you're watching that guy just pull away from you, even if it's just a bike length at a time, nothing will drain your drive and your energy quicker than feeling like you're doing everything you can do and watching somebody ride away from you. And you may end up with your visor laying up mile marker five. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so, and if you're Jordan you know? Ashburn, you know, again, we've talked about his consistency, his his race brain, his race IQ. He's a very, very smart racer. you got to believe he's riding within himself right now. Right. Stu Baylor's able to ride away from him. Jordan's going to do everything he can to beat him today. Very mindful of the fact that he's racing for a championship and Stu is not. Very little to gain. Yeah. Very little. Yeah, there's a couple points there, absolutely. But the bottom line is uh, not a worry, not a concern to yeah. him in the least bit right now. And the focus is keep it on two wheels, get to that checkered flag, say, hey, Ricky Terry, what's up? You know, <laughs> boom, got this one in the books. I mean, you take a look at the points the way they stand. I mean, really, uh, he needs to finish in front of Craig DeLong. Uh, I'm trying to think who else is right there with him. Uh, um, DeLong, Toth, those Toth, guys are yeah, all That's it. Of, yeah. he, check. That, that's check the box mark. that he's checked. I mean, he's Absolutely. checked that box. So. And, th and those gaps are, are big. It's, yeah. You know, it's uh, it's a big gap. I, it I believe is. Uh, Bollinger was 37 behind, if I remember yeah. correctly. Obviously, with him out. DeLong, I don't remember exactly. Um, but I think it was in the 40-point range. Um, yeah, it's it's a big gap. Ricky Russell by there in the fourth place spot. So despite his crash, still hanging out to a very solid fourth place position. Unfortunate, leading almost all this way. Uh, but here at the four mile marker on our final lap of racing, solidly settled into the fourth place position. Moving right along here this afternoon at the Mountaineer GNCC. Baylor Heavy out in front, leading the way. Jordan Ashburn doing what he needs to do to stay in front as the championship chase is concerned. We'll be back with more GNCC on Racer TV after this. I'm Stuart Baylor. You're watching GNCC Live on RacerTV.com.
Last season was my best season ever by far. I won a lot of races, I won the championship, and it was my, also my first year using Arma. And one of the things I noticed was just my ability to string good days together. You know, like especially in the summertime in Florida where you're riding every day and the heat index is 108 degrees and you're doing 230s and going to the gym and bicycle and, and all that stuff. I think in the past I've been super inconsistent day to day. Yeah, I may have a, you know, a good race here or, you know, a good day during the week there. But overall, I think where I improved the most was my consistency in my recovery. Naughty Tires, a division of Greenball Corp, has been in the tire business for over 44 years. We're passionate about developing quality tires that perform great and bring extraordinary value to our customers. Whether you're looking for a tire that can handle your off-road adventures, need a reliable tire to take you from job site to job site, or simply want a tire with a beefier look that won't break the bank, then check out Kanati Tires. USMCA has been connecting riders to certified coaches since 2016. There are over 300 active certified coaches on MotorcycleCoaching.org, and we recently launched our new mobile app, making it easy to connect with a coach and book your next training session. So here's what you do. Download the Motorcycle Coaching app, then search for coaches in upcoming classes. Once a training session is booked, riders have the option to pay for their class and even get a calendar reminder that will automatically sync to their phone. Get connected today. Even when you're the best, you never stop striving to be better. With over 40 years of experience in motorcycle sales and service, we know racing. Our inventory of Yamaha motorcycles, sport bikes, dirt bikes, ATVs, and side-by-sides is extensive and constantly changing. Stop by Lojack Cycle Sales today in Tarentum, Pennsylvania, and visit our online inventory at www.lojacks.com. Yamaha YZ. It's why we ride. How would you like to go to a school where we take into consideration how students learn best? Well, we do that. Because we find if we can build the curriculum around the things you are interested in, you're going to do a better job. The mission at On Track School is that educational success is possible while chasing your dreams. Not only will our staff help students to achieve success, they will cheer you on to the finish line. We encourage you to check out On Track School at ontrackschool.com, where we can help you chase your dreams and still get a quality education. OnTrackSchool.com, check it out.
up the overall championship, and then we're gonna um, probably go to the, the three hour. T-Rex, Nick DeFeo, a perfect 10 for 10 to start the season. And uh, hey, speaking of, well, we got the youth race covered. We had some pretty big action in the AM race as well. Somebody going out and get them overall. And Griff Cotter stands by with Thor Powell. So we've made our way from VP Fuels Pro Row over here to the Moose Cooldown Zone. And we ran into this AM race overall winner, the number 15 on the triangle, Yamaha Thor Powell. Thor, take us through your first overall win. Man, so I didn't have that good of a start. Uh, it was probably, I was honestly last going around the first corner, came in in the second one, I was about eight. And then the first mile before we got to the monster mile, I just tried to make passes. Uh, I had a good battle going on for about two miles and then got a nice lead. And then I caught Corey Steve on like the second lap. And I was like, man, I'm moving, something's going on. And then I caught Rachel and then I just put my head down and kept going. and. When we pitted, me and my dad, he's like, you're second overall. I was like, I can get this. I want to win. This is this is what I'm here to do is win. And I wrapped up my class championship today, so we might be moving the three-hour now. You heard it from Thor here down in the Moose cooldown zone. We're waiting for that checkered flag to come out. Back to you guys. I got to hand it to Thor, pal. I challenge. He come up to me uh, before oh, the I race. Yeah, yeah, he said, oh, I'm going to beat the girls. And I'm like, yeah, buddy, good luck. Okay, so I'm like, all right, I'm gonna put you on blast. I'm gonna put you on social media of you saying this, and you yeah. better go back it up. And he backed it up. Yeah. Corey Steed messaged me though after the race, and she goes, that won't happen again. Oh, I love that it. That will not happen. I again. love it. And you know what? Uh, that statement might have been easier to accept if you weren't talking about Corey Steed, Rachel Archer, That's it. Uh, Jones, and the rest. Uh, you yeah. know what I mean? So uh, great job by Thor. Uh, I know you've had some running bets with him also. Oh, yeah. Uh, he cost you 100 bucks earlier in the year, I believe. Oh, and almost. So, yeah. At Loretta's, I got a yeah. little nervous. Uh, but, yeah, he uh, he did not do as well at Loretta's as he wanted. So I was able to skirt that one. The bottom line, you know, you can you can call your shot as long as you're willing to back That's it up. It. You know, they say it's arrogant until you do it. Until I mean, you do it, maybe, right. Maybe it, uh, you know, maybe it wouldn't have played out as well or aged as well <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> had, he, had he not have done it. But he did it, so kudos to him. Yeah, yeah, did, did great. Very well done, Thor Powell. I was trying to get him to tell me what was next for him. He's staying hush about that, so. Oh, yeah, ne next step has to be big. That's it. Yeah, yeah. what do you do now? Yeah. So. Got a minute here before we should see our leaders check in here to the eight mile marker. And the last lap, white flags out. Stu Baylor's in control. Baylor heavy out front. Uh, Pressure doing from it. behind, Jordan Ashford. Yeah. Still in sight, not not quite close enough to make a move, but you know, one mistake from Stu and Jordan Ashford's back in the lead is think that ball solidly there in third. And uh, you know, you've got to know that the West Virginia fans and honestly GNCC fans, it's been a long road for Thad Duvall. <laughs> Spending all of last, mo most of last season injured, uh, yes. all of this season injured, uh, getting injured very early at round one. Uh, coming back, this is his first ride back and in a podium position. I mean, you, you couldn't possibly want for any more than that. Absolutely. I mean, it's been, uh, how many years did we spend talking about Caleb Russell, Thad Duvall, Caleb Russell, Thad Duvall, and then Caleb retires, and it was, the easy answer was Thad Duvall, and then the injuries came, and then they came some more, and it's just been more downs than ups for Thad. Yeah, it's just been a wild story. You know, mini cycle prodigy come out, won yes. the lights title, boom, bang, you know, everybody pumped up, and we're just waiting for the natural progression, and then just setback after setback after setback, yeah. a lot of stuff, you know, naturally beyond his control. And man, oh man, just been uh, a challenge and a struggle, and every time we see him have success, you know, just so pumped yes. up for that because very few people put in the effort and put in the time. He, you know, talked to, uh, I can say it now, but, you know, it was within this season when he went out, talked with his wife, Maggie Duvall, and, you know, she kind of expressed, this might be it. I, yeah. The way he's talking, sure. he, he might want to hang it up. And she's like, that's between you and I. And, well, now it's been long enough now, and we know that's not the case for him. He wants to come back and will come back. So great to see Thad out there having some success. And speaking of success, that man we showed you from the youth race, Nick DeFeo, uh, who is perfect 10 for 10 here in 2022, stands by with Griff Cotter. Griff Cotter. We caught him a uh, kind of a candid moment here for T-Rex and Nick DeFeo. Nick, how's your day going? Pretty good. Uh, Capping off another perfect or uh, another win here. You're perfect on the season. Uh, how'd the race go this morning? I got I got off to my first hole shot of the season. Um, never thought it was gonna happen. Um, 
I just put it down, was having fun, got to uh, about a four minute gap and went for 10 for 10. What is there left to do in the youth ranks for T-Rex? Go get one more win so I can beat JoJo's record for most consecutive wins and then get to go to big bikes. So we're not gonna try for 13 for 13? I mean, if someone wants to like send up a little bit of money so I can go do all. Was that a shot at Mikey Wayne's right there? Yeah. <laughs> all right, down here from the cool down zone, Nick DeFeo, YXC1 winner here uh, at the Mountaineer GNCC. Back to you guys. <sighs> all right, fine. I'll put you up. Listen, he can, the DeFeo's, you guys can stay at my place for Iron Man. There you go, free room and board. Come down to the whiskey that, bar. Me and Dad can hang out. While hey, Mr. with Fayo the prices of hotel rooms in Crawfordsville during Iron Man weekend, that's, that's about a $2,000 uh, <laughs> offer no right there. Yeah, absolutely. No kidding. I know where we're going to eat. Yeah, let's do it. I know that. The Francis so, and Mount, buddy. You know it. Hey, whoa, yeah. whoa, we don't talk about that on air. Nobody needs to know about that place. <laughs> that's true. Keep it on the low. <laughs> it's called McDonald's. It's at the corner yeah, of... There's also a Burger King, yeah. Wendy's. Yeah. yeah, right on the a side Apple, of the Apple the off ramp. Applebee's is the best place in town. That's where you need to go for dinner. <laughs> Anything that you just heard, <laughs> everyone go there. Oh man! Uh, All right, I won't. I won't mention any more of the spots. Yeah, there, well, and don't work people up on macaroni and cheese that doesn't exist. Yeah, that I screwed okay, up. Okay, listen. There's, there's two Mexican places in Crawford's. Though. Yes. Well, one there's like them, four, but well, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, one I of do. them used to be the good one, or I felt used to be the good one, and it's now garbage. Uh, the one on the outside. Of I'm not going to say anything because I live there and it, I don't know those people, but I know those people. When the name is Senior Thompson's. You are that correct. That ought to tell you right away. <laughs> Senior Thompson's. It has really fallen okay. off the, uh, the the. You go downtown still, scale. right? Yeah, we go to Little okay, Mexico. Okay, Little Mexico. Yep. That's that's the spot. That's yeah. my spot, man. Yeah. I was there yeah. with you after, yeah, we, after the race yep, a couple that's months right. ago. Yeah. yeah, that was, was a good time. We'll wait and we'll watch. We'll I'm going to jump Mexico. in here. Hot take. All right, here we Hot go. Hot take. Griff's coming. Little Mexico is not the best Mexican restaurant in Crawfordsville. El Charo, right across the street. It's the lesser known of the Mexican joints, and uh, it's the best Mexican restaurant in Crawfordsville. You heard it here. Leader on screen, Stu Baylor, Grant Baylor, G G G Griff Cotter coming in with the hot take. Stu Baylor leading the way, eight mile marker, meaning he's got four miles left standing between him and a win here at the Mountaineer GNCC, and he has continued to open up the gap on Jordan Ashburn. Here comes Ashburn, still solidly within striking distance, but needing to make some major magic happen in the last four miles here if he wants a shot at the win today. Great point save for Jordan Ashburn, even if he does close out the day in second place, he will continue to open up an even larger lead in that pro championship battle for the 2022 GNCC overall championship. So impressive. Yeah, I kept looking there, and you talking about the gap. Kept coming and coming and coming, getting bigger and bigger. And sure enough, here we go. Just about four miles left in this thing, and uh, Baylor doing what Baylor does. Yep, that's it right now there. They have both opened up quite a gap over Thad Duvall, but you got to believe if you're Thad Duvall, you're doing the smart thing here. You're solidly in a 40th uh, or in a fourth place position. Megawatt over here still trying to figure out if slaps is a. <laughs> he's got his. Uh, appears to have some family in. Uh, he's. Con He's conferring if that is a proper term. That it's a TikTok term. But that's, that's Hannah Watt. Has has has. No, oh, and our producers now come in and say it's not a TikTok term. It's just slaps. Like everyone knows, this is a thing. Oh, like it's bussing. Like it's yeah. Oh, yeah, it's bussing. Yeah. That's another one. All right. Yep. So we have confirmed that slaps is a uh, proper term. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah, Megawatt. We are learning. It, it, it did not translate because Megawatt did not use it in proper context. Can, can yeah, you use yeah, it in a yeah, sentence? Yeah, use it no, because I'm an adult. Yeah, I don't <laughs> have to. Yeah. yeah. All right, our top three are through. Stu Baylor leading the way. Jordan Ashburn second. Thad Duvall in third. That is going to be, unless something dramatic happens here in the final few miles, your podium in the running order that they run will continue to wait and watch. Can Jordan Ashburn put in one final push to close down the gap, get himself in position to make a move on Stu Baylor? Can Thad Duvall pull off the unthinkable, put in the hottest four miles in the history of GNCC racing, get up and mix it up for the win here today? All three of these guys, you've got to know, are just going to be happy to be on the podium. Great points day, as we pointed out. For Jordan Ashburn, your points leader, running that reverse number plate in quest of what would be his first ever GNCC overall championship. Uh, obviously, Stu Baylor coming back. Was back for our for previous snow round shoot, snow yeah. shoot, but uh, now back at full capacity, full yep. steam. Baylor Heavy is on the throttle and 
up at the FMF power point at the 10 mile marker. Makes it up over the top without any issue. And we will wait and see what is the gap. Back to Jordan Ashford. 38.20 as he went over the top there. Looking like it's probably going to be upwards of 20 seconds back to Jordan Ashburn. Uh, there is Ashburn, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, about 16 seconds back. So not a huge gap, but uh, Baylor looking pretty comfortable there in that first place position. Baylor looking good. My phone is blowing up now, by the way, back home. Everybody's like, Little Mexico, Little Mexico. <laughs> Stu Baylor knows a thing or two about good eats. I can say that. You know, he felt my fellow dad, but there is Jordan Ashburn right there on screen rolling through. So good gap. I think good gap. I think now. Jordan Ashburn would prefer Little Mexico. Heck yeah. Oh, yeah. He's from Tennessee. That's his kind of Mexican. Absolutely. But yeah, you're right. I think Ashburn doing the smart thing, settling into that second place position. There's no reason to go out, risk it, and go down get a DNF and suddenly things start looking a little more interesting moving into the next round. Ohio's next, right? I believe that's where we're heading. Yeah, Johnny's uh, kind of your backyard. Uh, sort of. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're going. I don't know any good Mexican restaurants around. All here. right, fair enough. Dad Duvall up the <laughs> FMF power point in that third place spot. It's been a long race. All I'm thinking about is Mexican. It just slaps according to Yeah, Griff said it slaps. Everybody, that's part, you know what? That's like the unspoken thing of GNCC, though. Everybody's got a spot. There is. Thad Duvall. Was that Thad? Yeah, Thad Duvall still moving. That's like the unspoken thing. You leave the race. Everybody's got their traditions, right? You stop. You get some Mexican food after race day. That was always our go-to. Now I'm just hauling the mail to get home, but that was always tradition. You know I don't give out the secrets in Denver. Yeah. Okay, you know San Diego. I got my spots. Okay? Absolutely. We don't, we don't hand those secrets out up there, no, I say, in the, the pooch, Pacific though. Northwest, yeah. you know, for example. You never want to give away the spots when it's going to be a busy weekend. You Good wanna, point. You want to save your table. Good so point. We're probably now after the race next I at Ironman. We're going to try to go to Little Mexico and it's going to be, <laughs> be just flying out the door. At least that other place it is? you mentioned. It, it actually, I heard a lot of people got food poisoning there. The <laughs> so we're gonna, no one should go there. <laughs> I walked out of Outback two weeks ago. I said I cannot believe they're out of steak. I cannot there was believe a they're huge out of steak. Line <laughs> waiting to get in. I cannot believe they're out of steak. Devastating. <laughs> oh shoot. We're going to see Mikey's face on a billboard out oh there my for Lord. Mexico, an endorsement. Have his signature across there the you billboard. Go. The official restaurant of GNCC funny. Racing and Mikey Wayne. Yeah, it's good stuff, man. We're waiting. We're watching. Should be the 212 of Ricky Russell. If we hang around long enough, we'll see him here. Uh, <clears throat> he still had a pretty solid gap over fifth place. Looking like he was moving along pretty nicely the last time we saw him at the four-mile marker, despite an obviously torn jersey, some body posture that tells us He'd spent a little bit of time on the ground and, and looked like he took a pretty hard hit there. So we'll hope Ricky's all right. And it looks like that is not Ricky coming right there. But we Here do we have go. our leader crossing the line, Mikey Waynes. There he is, folks. The 514. Do it for the Graham Stu Baylor. You don't need that rear fender. In true Stu Baylor fashion, I got to hand it, uh, I believe it's Jackson Fisher. They call him Fish on EMTB Bikes did this exact same thing yesterday. He upped the ante, though. He got on the podium and did like a belly slide across the podium. So, Stu Baylor, if you're listening, I don't think it's wet enough up there, but just keep that in mind. And there is his wife, Jade. Look at the smile on Stu Baylor's face. A well-earned win today, putting in the work right there. All congratulations around for the Ampro Yamaha ride at 514, a Stu Baylor. He's gassed. Is that right? Did I use that right, Hannah? I felt like gassed. Okay. I could see you were doing I the think same it's thing. Exhausted. Not, not you start doing this. I don't think I said it right for the kids. Oh for us old guys, I think I said it right. It's over. Ricky just tanked. Ricky was done, man. He was done. All right. He said Ricky was just gassed. Ricky tanked. I uh, don't know if uh, he feels that Ricky just kind of bonked there. Um, I don't think he knows about the actual no, no. With, with Ricky. Um, but obviously, we, we could tell by Ricky's body language. I, I think something more than him just getting tired happened there. Uh, maybe it was after. Oh, look at this. Thad Duvall crossing the line. We don't have a shot of it, but here he is. Third place, podium position for Thad Duvall. Hats off to that guy. Absolutely. What a return to GNCC Racing. You know he's got to be one happy, happy guy, as this guy, as is this guy right here, Stu Baylor. You know, big win for him today and that Ampro Yamaha team.
I got, I got to say, you know, again, like you said, hats off to Thad. Uh, was talking about Thad just wants to have some fun. <laughs> and uh, I would say a podium finish on his first race back is as fun as it gets. And uh, <laughs> Baylor getting rid of some snot rockets there. Hey, we give you, it's, it's the raw post race that I love, man. You can see Jordan Ashburn looking pretty composed sitting over there. A great day for him. Obviously a great points day and uh, looking like Griff Cotter's getting pretty close to ready with Stu Baylor here. Well, we miss you before the race and it didn't take long. Back up on top of the box, Stu Baylor. Take us through your ride out there today. We'll let you get your goggles on. Slow start, but you're able to claw your way up to the top. Yeah, you know, I, uh, God, we, we, we had a really rough first lap. I, we made a tire choice that uh, I was really concerned about after the first two laps. Um, you know, we had some fresh stuff out there for our race and uh, it just wasn't down to that hard base yet. And I, I swear I couldn't keep it on two wheels. I crashed four or five times, pretty good ones on the first first two laps. And um, finally the, the track polished off and uh, and the tire became the right call. You know, it's, it's the same tire we've won the last three years here consecutively. So. Um, you know, I, I knew it was good. I was just second second guessing it with the with the little bit of rain we haven't seen in the past here. So um, once we found our groove, you know, I I got hooked up with Johnny and uh, before the race, Johnny and I were bullshitting and we were like, hey man, one and two overall today. And see, he just came through, so it looked like he dropped back a little bit. But uh, you know, I was <laughs> I was hoping we could we could run right to the front. And um, you know, finally I got some got some clear air and got in uh, got in a train and happened really quick. I got a pit board minus 20 minus 15 and then I could I was on them at the rock garden and uh, it looked like Ricky got really tired man this track was extremely physically demanding but you know when you're when you're in the shape that I'm in it's uh, it's a walk in the park out there we can see it in your face at snowshoe that even first race back off of an injury being on the podium wasn't quite good enough uh, so how does it feel being back up here yeah, it's good. You know, I, I, uh, I mean, to have to come back from what I, what I came back from this year, like, um, that's a feat in itself. And there was, there was a point in time where I was about over it. I was about done. I, I about threw in the towel. I mean, when you, when you lose feeling in your hands and feet, like, scary, um, especially with a kid. And, uh, you know, sometimes it, uh, it, it wore on me. It almost felt selfish for me to go and line back up after that one. But, uh, you know, this is, this is the livelihood, and we got to do it. And um, you know, it's uh, it's what we live for, and um, you know, you you can't you can't match the feeling that you get when you when you come back from something like that. I mean, broken neck and then uh, crushed face my first race back, and um, you know, it's been it's been a bumpy road to say the least. But uh, I'm just glad to be back on top, and um, still far from 100%. I I think it definitely showed those first couple laps. I was definitely struggling, but. Um, you know, you just gotta gotta get back out here and get in the swing of things. That's what we did. But um, hats off to the whole team, uh, and Pro Yamaha, Yamaha, my my wife, my family. <clears throat> um, good Lord for keeping me safe. All, all the all the supporters. Um, you know, the fans are the fans are the reason we do this. And uh, the West Virginia cr crowds like no other. I mean, they got chainsaws and air horns in the woods. And man, it uh, gets you on your toes every time you hear them. So thanks to everybody. Stu Baylor, he's relentless and he's champion here today at the 2022 Rocky Mountain ATV MC Mountaineer GNCC. So in the background there, as we were watching, uh, while we wait for Jordan Ashburn to be ready for his interview, uh, it looked like Johnny Gerard was the next rider in, so he'll be fourth overall, uh, just behind him, Ricky Russell, fifth overall. Uh, and fourth in that XC1 Pro class. Here we see Thad Duvall coming over to congratulate Stu Baylor. Uh, and now they're gonna, we're gonna see the uh, post-race kind of bench racing session between these three, your top three overall today. They uh, all look pretty happy and all for very different reasons to be so happy to be on the podium today. Again, Ashburn really, really taking an even more commanding grip on this, this 2022 championship points lead. Uh, Thad Duvall back on the podium in his first race back after missing the entire season with a very serious injury. And uh, Stu Baylor, obviously anytime you win, you're a happy, happy man. I didn't want to interrupt that bench racing session, but uh, second on the day, Jordan Ashburn, how'd it go out there? Yeah, it went pretty good. I got a good start and uh, just kind of followed Ricky and he actually ended up getting away that first lap and man, I was just trying to put together solid laps and it was tough on this track and uh, you know, there towards the end, Stu and Thad caught up and uh, man, it's like we had a train that into that third and that fourth lap and it hit, it hit, I think it hit all of us like a wall. Like it was just like, man, this is, 
really intense and uh, you know we kind of put it back together there and we all kind of stretched it out just a little bit and uh, I think I just stayed 10 to 20 seconds behind Stu that last lap and I'd make a little up and could see him and then he'd pull back out and you know I was just gassed I was just ready to get in and uh, keep running two wheels. You're going to maintain the points lead headed into Burr Oak does that go through your mind? Yeah definitely you know uh, just thinking you know keep it off the ground out here and uh, so you could make some big mistakes out here in some high speed sections and uh, you know I kind of would taper back in those sections and just try to try to ride my race and uh, race the track. Second on the day, he's number three, and he's the points leader, Jordan Ashburn. Jordan Ashburn, cool, calm, collected, just as we expected. I mean, it's, it's so funny because his post-race interviews of Jordan Ashburn are almost identical to the way he rides. They're very methodical, thought out, uh, says the right thing, calculated. There you go. Uh, that is just Jordan Ashburn to a T right there. So did exactly what he needed to do today and that was get up front beat the guys who you know you need to beat as far as the championship uh, numbers are concerned and hey bring it home don't need to finish first just need to stay in front of those guys and he did just that and it sounds like we are ready with our third place ride welcome back that Duvall back down here on the podium in specialized victory lane with native West Virginia Thad Duvall how's it feel to be third place on the day uh, it feels good I Man, I'm stoked just to be third. Uh, I don't know, like six months ago, I didn't even know if I wanted to still race. Like, So, um, yeah, to be up on the podium is, is pretty badass. Unbelievable comeback so far. Uh, did you expect to be here? Um, yeah, I mean, the expectations are always high, especially, you know, I've been at Caleb's for two months and riding with those guys and matching Johnny and matching Craig. And I know I still have the speed and just uh, got to put it together. And, Man, just, um, yeah, I rode really good today till the last lap and just made a bonehead mistake and let those guys get away. But, yeah, to be, be third after everything I've been through, this is, uh, man, it feels good. I got to ask it from one West Virginian to another. What's it mean to do it here in front of your home crowd? Yeah, it's it's very special, dude. The, the fans are crazy, like, at the hill climb and stuff. They're just, like, going nuts. So, yeah, it's cool that this is a West Virginia race. The next chance he sees, like, a home race in Ohio, then West Virginia again. So, Got to keep those fans happy. Third place on the number 989 factory rock star Husqvarna, Dad Duvall. All right, so uh, some quick math here. Um, Jordan Ashburn, 187, coming into today with a seven-point lead over uh, Ben Kelly. Obviously, a um, I think it was 30-some-odd point lead over Trevor Bollinger. Both those riders idle. Uh, he will extend his points lead still over Ben Kelly, but to 217 to Ben Kelly's 180, uh, giving him a 37-point lead now over Ben Kelly. Uh, interesting fact, we obviously know Ben Kelly and right. Trevor Bollinger will not be rejoining. So over the next active rider after today, Craig DeLong finishing sixth overall, <clears throat> had 141 points coming in today. He will have a 61-point wow. lead over Craig DeLong in the championship standings as they leave here today, meaning he has a two-plus race lead yep. with three rounds remaining. Uh, essentially, let's not take any drama out of this. Absolutely. But Jordan Ashburn finishes ahead of Craig DeLong at the next race. He wraps up the championship. Pretty impressive. Good question. We're, 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 yeah. yeah, there's a lot of questions being thrown around about the mathematical reality of Bollinger and AMA um, rules as far as well. Yes, Bollinger and um, and also Ben Kelly, you know, not even though we know they're not going to finish the season until they're mathematically eliminated. Technically, he does not clinch the championship. That being said, with a 37 point lead, would he go out and score anything more than 20? Uh, oh, go ahead. Mikey, you got something. Uh, was just going to point out officially. Looks like Grant Davis finishes 10th in the overall. There we go. Five laps complete, 10th what overall. What an impressive ride. And third place in that XC2 class, Rui Barbosa, making the pass there on Liam Draper and getting to within 26 seconds of Lyndon Snodgrass, actually. So a great last lap for Rui Barbosa. Hats off to him and that Phoenix Honda team. All right, so there you go, folks. There is your top 10 results for today, unofficial. Yeah, that's not it. 
unofficial. That's oh, we're missing a few. Yeah, yeah you're right. Draper at ninth. That's you're right. You're right. Uh, but nonetheless, Sue Baylor going to take the win today. Jordan Ashburn going to take second. And Thad Duvall returning to GNCC, putting it on the box. Shoot. Huge congratulations to those guys. What a race. GNCC's back, baby. Silly season. Got three rounds to go. Want to give a huge shout out and thank you to everybody who makes it possible. Uh, Megawatt Matt Watson, thanks for coming out, hanging out with us today, calling some racing, amateur racing, the pro race today as well. Hey, thanks a lot, Mikey. You know, love it. Uh, good to get back here. And uh, anytime I can hang out with you guys, just pick up the phone, give me a ring, bro. I love Heck it. Yeah, love it, man. Uh, thank you to Johnny Gallagher as well. All of our camera operators, Gabe, Nick, Jessica, Brett, Chloe, John Carpenter, Dylan A. Quarter Director, Adam Gordon, of course, our executive producer, Carrie Russell, uh, uh, Jordan McFadden, Dan Reinhardt. It takes a team, and uh, we thank you for that. So thanks for watching here, uh, GNCC Live on RacerTV.com. That's going to do it for us here at the Mountaineer GNCC. We'll see you at the races.